Hey guys, what's up? You're watching Fishers Off-Road, and we are getting ready to do the rider review for the Honda Talon R. Stay tuned. We got a lot of great info coming your way. Hey guys, I'm Brian. And I'm Tyler. And we're here with Fisher's Off-Road Rider Reviews, and we are actually going to break it down this week with the Honda Talon R. Yep. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of lot of stuff I'm looking forward to. I'm telling I'm, you, the information is going to be crazy. I'm, I'm really anxious to see what these guys have. To, we don't have any ladies this time. No, it's all guys. It's all guys. And I think we got six of them that we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious to see because we got some West Coast guys. We got some East Coast guys. We got some guys that have a couple hundred miles on their machine. We got guys that have... 2,000 miles on their machine. Yep. It's definitely, so it's, it's a broad spectrum of yeah. people that we have that are reviewing this Talon uh, 1000R. So, I mean, if you guys are in the market and you're really considering this, uh, the Talon R, this is something that you're definitely going to want to watch, pay attention to, take notes, because these are the people that have invested their time and money into accessories and everything about this unit. And the one guy we're going to be interviewing has already owned an X and now he owns an R. So mm -hmm. his input is going to be pretty important. Yeah. Yeah, it's I definitely, uh, I, I'm excited, and I just want to dive right into this. I'm ready to go, man. But real quick, I want to do some real quick housekeeping here. We want to thank you all for being here. If you're new to this channel, hit subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you're watching us on a uh, podcast, video, whatever it is. Be mm -hmm. sure and subscribe to it. And we want to give a shout out to our friends at Rick's Motorsport Electrics who are bringing this uh, podcast, video, rider review to you all. These guys are awesome up there in New Hampshire. If you need any electrical stuff done, uh, ATV, PW. You see snowmobile, side-by-side, -side, street bike, you name it. Rick's Motorsport Electrics has it. These guys are like family. They're awesome. If you need anything, give them a call and tell them the fishers said to give them a call. We <laughs> sent you their way. So we're going to dive right into this here, Rider Review, because we can't wait to get started. This is going to be another long one, guys, so yeah. hang in there. Let's get it started. Yeah. So here we go. We got Paul Howard. He is 45 years old, weighing in at 275 pounds, six foot three, and he is in Waynesburg, PA. And let's see, he rides mostly Hatfield McCoy, had his town almost a year, has about 2,000 miles on it, and this is not his first side by side. And he has owned a Polaris before. So uh, let's get Paul on the horn here and see what he has to say about his Talon R. I guess I need some headphones. <laughs> Hello. Paul. Yeah. Hey, this is Brian and Tyler. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Good, good. Do you got a second to talk? Are you busy? You're in the middle of uh, doing something important? No, we're good. All right. Fantastic, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we we're just giving you a call to talk about your talent and uh, get some feedback from you. We've uh, got a lot of people that were really interested in this uh, podcast and interested in joining us. So we're glad to have you on the show here. Thank you. Yep. Uh, first of all, um, let's talk about uh, how hard are you on your yeah, unit, Paul? Yeah, I'm, I'm, how do you We know that you got uh, 1,900 miles on that unit. How are, how are those easy miles? What are they? Um, I would say medium, medium hard. I, I don't, I don't destroy my stuff, <laughs> uh, but, I, but I ride it, uh, you know, jump. I, I do a lot of jumping and, and, you know, I, I, I hit things pretty hard. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we, with that talent R, I mean, that, that suspension sucks up a lot of them jumps. So too. Yeah, but it kicks a lot. Um, which I'm, I'm going to start working on here. It, it, it kicks. I, I've rode the front wheels more than my fair share. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So it gets a little kick happy in the rear end. Yeah. It, yeah. It, that's one, that's one of the downfalls about it. It, it, it kicks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, did you happen to add any accessories to it yet? Yeah. It's got the window. It's got the front wind glass windshield from Honda and mm -hmm. then it's got the Honda stereo system, Honda back glass. Uh, Honda storage compartment and carnival uh, thir uh, 29 and a half inch carnivores. Okay. okay. All right. And uh, what made you go with the Talon over? You, I know you were a Polaris owner before, but uh, what made you go with the Talon? The Honda reputation. Mm -hmm. So that's, just I mean, no belt and the maintenance yeah. and reliability. No yeah. Yeah. I, I really like the Can Am X3s. I really like the horsepower of them. Um, 
but still belt driven. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, turbo's ordered for mine, so we'll see. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, have you had any issues with that so far? I know you got 1,900 miles on there. Um, it's actually uh, at the shop right now. Mm. I did not get the shift cables adjusted when you were supposed to. Oh, okay. Um, and it tore the sub-transmission out of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. What yeah, about... It the, well, it actually, the low, actually low gear. Uh, oh. Not necessarily the sub-transmission, but it tore the dogs <laughs> off of low gear from yeah. not going in all the way. Uh, so I try to tell people that 20 hours or whatever that service interval is on them mm-hmm. shift cables. Uh, I was lucky and Honda covered it. Yeah, uh, I was wondering I've about that. It. I've I've heard of some people in the Honda not covering it. Yeah, what yeah. um so working with them, you know, as far as warranty goes, is it is it easier if you've ever had anything done by Polaris or anybody else? Like, uh, how are they to work with as far as warranty goes and covering stuff? <laughs> Uh, they've been excellent for me. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't, you know, a Honda, uh, they had, in fact, they was pushing it in and out of the shop because the sub transmission was out of it and the rear axle was clicking. They fixed, they replaced that too. Okay. Okay. Uh, did did so, you have to, uh, did you have the recall on yours whenever they had the, uh, what was it, the fans, fans the no. fans were wired backwards? Nope. I did not have that. Hey, nice. Good deal. Yeah. I, I, mean, I know. I, Go ahead. Mine was the right way. Okay. I know whenever they first came out, that was all over the Honda forums and stuff. Oh, They're like, yeah. you got to be kidding me, they man. They were overheating. Yeah. And, well, yeah. I mean, you know, everybody, you know, everybody wants to jump on the front runner as far as, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, you know, Polaris is, I, I have two of them. Um, I have an 800 and a 800S and a 900S. Um and you know the money that it took to keep them running was unbelievable. So um, yeah, so just, just more maintenance very, driven. Yeah, I mean, just you know, every time you tore around, you were doing something to them things. The eight hundred was actually better than the nine hundred. Hmm. You really want the truth. Um, but that nine hundred I had just bushings. I mean, every bushing it had twenty. It had like three thousand miles on it. I've replaced every bushing in the A arms and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and I, I'm not, I'm not real hard on my stuff, but I, I expect it to do what it's built to do. Yeah, exactly. If it makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as far as, uh, I just, this is off the top of my head. This isn't really on our list here. As far as, uh, having that many miles on it and how you drive your unit, um, and having to maintain it, what are some things that you've ran into so far? Like you were just talking about bushings and everything. Um, is there anything that you've ran into that you noticed, you know, might be helpful for somebody else? Uh, nothing. Really? No, I mean, uh, nothing. 1900, I've done nothing. Wow. Nothing other than ride it. Other than, I feel the sub-transmission might have been somewhat, um, maybe my, you know, mm-hmm. I had something to do with that because I didn't get it adjusted. So I'm not going to hold that against it. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, you know, but the actual clicking, you know, that happens to all of them mm-hmm. uh, from what, from what, you know, so... Uh, but I've done nothing. I have absolutely done nothing other than service. That's awesome. That's good. Deal. I have a little bit of complaint about the air filter. Um, when you're, mm-hmm. you know, it, I'm sure you've you, I'm sure you've read about them. The mm-hmm. air filter could use some, you know, there's something needs to be done with that because that air filter is forty some dollars. Yeah. Uh, and, and the dust we had this year down at Hatfield McCoy, it was just, you know, every time I went down for a weekend come back and it was 40 some dollars for an air filter yeah um, and you didn't have a choice it wasn't it wasn't questionable it was you had to do it yeah um, uh, but other than them couple things i have no um i i have no I, I wish mine had more horsepower but again uh you know We'll, we'll see what happens when I get the turbo put on it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, we know about that Hatfield McCoy. We we actually were at Hatfield McCoy whenever it started. Uh, it, it We got there whenever it was a week worth of rain after that dust. And then it was oh, all, man. and oh, yeah. it was still I dusty. That was slick. Yeah. No, yeah. it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. In fact, I didn't go, I normally go down twice a month. Okay. Oh, wow. I got a place at Appalachian RV Resort. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I got a camper there. So we, we, I just leave it there. Yeah. So we normally go down. Oh, uh, I don't know. We go down at least twice a month, sometimes more than that. That's awesome. And, uh, we didn't go the whole month. I think it was August mm-hmm. and most of September just because it was so, it was just terrible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not like mud. You can't get away from it. <laughs> no, no, there's definitely not. No. Yeah. How about, uh, I know, you know, we drove the Talon a couple times, but as far as like people you take with you, what do they say about the passenger comfort? Um, everybody I've had in, it's been okay with it. Mm-hmm. Other than the bucking, um, you know, some of them get a little bit uncomfortable with the bucking, mm-hmm. but, uh, uh, you know, I know a set of tender springs will fix that. I just haven't had, have just haven't got there yet. Yeah. Yeah. We, I know that you said that you added that, uh, the Honda, uh, storage compartment in the back, uh, before mm-hmm. that, whenever you first got it, what do you think about the, uh, storage on the Honda Talon? There is none. <laughs> we we or said the, same the lack thing. thereof. Yeah, yeah, we said the same I thing. Mean, there is not. I mean, you know, it's, it's and that's one of the reason. Um, uh, yeah, the, the glove compartment there there just is not. Yeah, yeah. So you you that's a, almost a necessity too. Yeah, to me to me it is. You know, because if you're going to go ride a Hatfield, you know, you do mostly hundred mile a day. Yeah, you know. Oh, you know, well, eighty to a hundred, but anyway, yeah, you know, you're going to need something. I don't care, you know, I don't care how easy you are or what. You're going to need something. I'll tell yeah. you what the thing that we noticed whenever we were actually out test driving this the uh, the rear storage on it, that storage compartment that you got is it's uh-huh. one of the best things you can invest in because the bed is so open. Mm-hmm. If you don't yep. have that, it, yep. it gets covered like yeah. trash. And I got a. Uh, I got a uh, super ATV spare tire carrier. Mm-hmm. I do. I do carry a spare tire. Good deal. Yeah, that's a good idea. How do you feel about the? Uh, we're going to get into some of this a little bit later, but I figured I'd touch on it while we're here. How do you feel about where the gas uh, cap is? The placement of that. Say that one more time. How do you feel about where the gas cap placement is? Uh, do you think it's a good idea, bad idea, and do you have the lower doors put on? I do. I have the lower doors, yes. Okay. Did did you ride it without the lower doors? Yes, I did. And what'd you think about the gas cap placement then? Didn't really have an I don't didn't really have an issue. Don't really have an issue either way. Yeah. Okay. You weren't in mud then. We <laughs> <laughs> we had uh whenever we test drove it, the lower door, the way the gas cap sits and because it's kinda flat there on the passenger side. Um, yeah, we were could get full yeah, I could understand what you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. I mean ours they had I mean, to I dig just, it out to put gas in it yeah yeah I, well i can i can un, yeah I, okay i could probably i've had to i mean i've had to uncover mine a couple of times but i just never really never really even give it a thought so. yeah yeah no they had to get in there and dig out all the mud and then they opened it up and you could see just dirt, dirt falling and, into the gas and I'm i was like, like oh man that is not good i'm like oh my yeah. god and it was we were riding in uh half sand half mud so yeah. it was i hear you yeah um i put uh i put my lower i didn't put my lower doors on until uh, I bought mine in May, Memorial Day, a mm-hmm. uh, week before Memorial Day. Uh, I didn't put my lower doors on till probably right before Christmas. Oh, okay. So I rode it, I okay. rode it a good bit without it. Yeah, so, yeah, so you did drive it for a yeah. while with that. Okay. Yeah. Before we get – so what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to go through this list. Uh, I'm sure you've listened to the podcast. We're going to give you a 1 to 10 rating on uh, things that – uh, we think are important on the inside of this. But before we get into that, I have one important thing I want to ask you, and that okay. is, what do you think about the cup holder placement? Um, I think it's uh, – it, it. you really can't carry anything big in it because your elbow is against it all the time. Yes. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, think, I think there could be better. Um, I I don't have an answer, but I think they could probably do something better. Mm-hmm. Right, we were we were talking about it because we had bottles of water with us. We were out in the uh, in the desert and the woods and stuff <clears throat> in uh, Utah riding them. And um, what we noticed was one, their cup holder design is excellent. It can fit anything from a little tiny bottle right. to a huge yes. cup. It's a it's a great design. The location yep. of it is kind of crappy because it's like you have to reach back behind yep. you. Mm-hmm. to get your drink and it's just kind of awkward to hold it that's what we thought about I agree. it and your elbow hits it all the time yep. yeah or yep. at least mine does yep i'm i'm a bigger person i'm six foot three 
So, yep. yeah, you know. So we're going to ask you some questions, and uh, we're going to score these uh, 1 to 10. 1 meaning it sucks, and 10 meaning it's the best. Um, we just ask that you keep it fair across the board because not every machine is a 10 out there, and not every machine <laughs> is a 1. Yeah. So we're just looking for honest, honest feedback on this. Um, how would you score it as far as interior comfort? Would that be uh, 1 through 10, and tell us why? I would say it's somewhere around an eight because I think uh, uh, I think the placement of the pedals could be a little bit further away from you. Mm -hmm. I think there's a little bit more room in that in that holder that could be a little bit more away from you. Mm -hmm. um, the cup the cup holders again could be a little bit better designed. Um, I, I think it's pretty much an eight. And okay, we, and we do some long days. Yeah. Okay. Now, what about reliability? We know we we touched on that a little bit earlier. How would you rate that? Well, so far I've got to give it a nine. I mean, you know, uh, we we've touched on what why. Yeah, and then um, ease of maintenance. You know, you said that you do a lot of your own maintenance. Um, if this is, how would you how would you rate this on a one to ten of how easy it is to work on this unit? I'm going to have to give that a six because I think their oil changes could be a little bit. I think the way they got their oil changes could be a little bit better designed. The oil input or where, where you put your oil in, um, especially mm -hmm. on that sub transmission. Yeah. Um, I think there could be, a, I, I think their air filter design, the way it's in there, uh, I think it could be a little bit better designed in that aspect. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, how about handling? How would you rate that? Uh, I have to give it a nine. Okay. And then uh, you said about the power. Where do you think that would be? For a naturally aspirated machine, I have to give it a ten because the 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 power is there when you whenever you want it, it's there. Mm -hmm. There's no waiting, no lag. It drops a gear and it goes. Okay. Now uh, you were talking about jumping. Where would you rate the suspension at on that? Then. Well, I'm going to have to give that somewhere around a seven because uh i i think they messed up somewhere on the back um uh and and when i first got mine uh it the chatter bumps the small stuff was just unbearable i thought it was just uh you know my 900 players was plush yeah it was soft mm -hmm. the, the 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 talon was not uh it was not soft yeah uh, it, it was really the small stuff was really you know you felt it yeah um but that being said i changed to carnivore tires at a thousand miles um that same day uh we rode to ziggy's mm -hmm. we put my carnivores on and we left ziggy's and my wife says to me did you do something with the suspension because it rides 10 times better wow mm. so yeah. i don't know it, and it did. It took a lot of that small stuff out of it. Mm -hmm. I did not help him with the kick, but it did help with the small stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't a fan of those tires when we test drove it. No, what were they? The Maxxis? Uh, yeah, whatever I whatever comes on it. Yeah, Maxxis Bighorn 2.0s or I whatever yeah, it is. I don't even know if that's what they were. I think they were something no, else. They're, they're, no, they're not a Bighorn. It was some. It was, it a, was, a, it was a Maxxis tire. And, yeah, and, it was definitely a Maxxis radio, but it was not a big one. We no. we were in the dunes and they had us running like was it like eighteen pounds twenty of pounds pressure. of air pressure. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, that's what we said. And they wouldn't let us take air yeah. out of the tires for insurance purposes. Yeah. The um. Uh, did you guys? Did you get any chance to ride a turbo while you was there or no? No, they didn't even have anything. That was still in development. They just gave us the price tag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they didn't it. have. <laughs> he says, they didn't tell have any me turbos. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're gonna pay to play on that one. Yeah, there's no doubt. It's ridiculous. You know, I'm in construction and excavating, and 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 I could buy a turbo for my excavator cheaper, and I could buy that. Yeah, no kidding, <laughs> no, no kidding. Yeah. How about how about the turning radius? How do you think that is? I know a lot of people uh, I, steer with the skinny, is, but that is a five. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, unless you unless you know you're right, unless you, I mean. I can turn it, but, you know, 
we actually did a test out there. We uh, did a circle, mm-hmm. and we did it in uh, – it was kind of like loose uh, dirt, mm-hmm. and uh, that way we could measure it. And I can't remember what it is to be a complete circle. I think it was like 37 or 38 feet, like yeah, it round circle. It was yeah. it was yeah, huge. Because we did it in two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. To see if there was a difference, and we did it with the R and the X. And mm-hmm. uh, Was there any difference? Uh, yeah, there was there was difference, but – I, we'll have to we'll have to go back and see if we can find a video of it because yeah. we did film it and we measured it too whenever we were out there for the intro. That was actually the X that was like almost forty, 40 feet, foot. Yeah. yeah, it was like thirty seven and a half something mm-hmm. like that. And that's it from was bigger than the R. Well, I think the R was more than that. The R was more than that. Yeah, but it was from inside tire to inside tire. So, like, right. yeah, it was it was uh, definitely it was a, it was a good test to do. And uh, two wheel drive definitely turns better than four wheel drive. <laughs> yeah, that thing. Yeah. Did you notice any um, driveline chatter in two-wheel drive, by the way? Well, yes, I did. And you know what I found out it was? What's that? Um, the U-joint cap was coming out. Mm. They fixed they fixed my drive shaft, mm-hmm. and there was no issues after that. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, because the ones we How drove. they had an issue yeah. with the driveline caps. Hmm. Yeah, the ones that we drove, they told us we couldn't take them out of four-wheel drive. Man, and the driveline chatter was bad. And we were like, well, we're going to take it out of four-wheel drive. Because you're clearly hiding <laughs> something. <laughs> right. But yeah. I only noticed mine on the road. Yeah. We didn't notice yeah. it until we were in, like, really washed-out bumps. Yeah. Like, washboarded bumps in the sand. Mm-hmm. And then it did it really bad. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, I, I don't I don't notice too much other than, you know, but when they fixed that, they put a new dry shaft in it, um, it was good. Hmm. Okay. Now – we're gonna go ahead and move on here, Paul. Uh, okay. We know we know you're six three. You're a little bit, you know, you're a taller, taller gentleman. As far yep. as line of sight and visibility over the hood, out the doors, where would you rate that at? Uh, I'd have to give it probably a six because it's it's better than some of them, but not as good as others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's definitely better than a Can Am X3, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know yeah. what? That's, yeah, that's... everybody everybody says that, and, and the reason for that they give you that try, they try to give you that sport feel, like you're laying back into the bed of the unit. I'm yeah. I'm not a big fan well, of that either. Yeah, I changed the seats on my X3 as soon as I got it because number one, I'm too short to even see over the hood, <laughs> and then they had yeah, them seats. The, did you put the inch and a half risers in the back or whatever they uh, whatever they make? No, I got seats right from uh, Beard and Can Am. Uh, okay. and they were all set up. They, they already had the, the base, everything was done. So I didn't have to really mess with it a right. whole lot, but yeah. Right. Uh, and those were actually adjustable. You could adjust the pitch on them. So that was okay. nice about those, um, to pitch when too bought, far was straight up. <laughs> well, I bought mine in May. Okay. And, and when they introduced this thing, they introduced, I'm sure you guys well aware that they introduced a turbo. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here about two months ago or a month and a half ago, I started looking for an X3 Mm -hmm. because I I ride with a lot of X3s and I get tired of getting my ass kicked. (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know, cause X3 has got the horsepower. I mean, there's just no, there's no way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is what it is, you know, uh, but you're, you're naturally aspirated to a turbo. So that, that right there tells you something. Yeah. It's not even the same league. Um, so, but then finally they released the turbos. I'm not happy about the price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the price is up there. Yeah. I, I think it's, I, I, you know, I don't understand why it's, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I just hope it's worth, uh, I hope it's worth the money. <laughs> <laughs> when, when are you, uh, when are you installing that? When are you getting that installed? Uh, it's not going to be here till the end of the month. All right. well, listen, we have to give you a call. Listen, back. whenever you get that installed, shoot us in a message because I would like to know what the talent is like with a turbo. With a turbo on it, because we've heard. Have you guys gotten any feedback? No, no not really. Okay. Yeah, nothing really. I, we're just kind of. You're one of the first ones that we've talked to that are getting the turbo and getting it put on, and just we want to we want to hear about it. So whenever you get mm-hmm. it on, give us an update, please. Yeah, for sure. I. I I've heard, uh, um, and I've heard this from a couple pretty good people. Um, it will smoke a 172 uh, horsepower X3. Wow! Wow! 
Well, then you uh, got to run the RR and get pissed off all over again because yeah. you just well, spent all that money. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't kick. It the RR will. It, it'll beat it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to deny that. But they say the RR only beats it by four or five car lengths. Oh, that's pretty good ass whipping four or five <laughs> car lengths. That's, that's pretty. Mean, that's, that's a pretty decent. That's one way to water down yeah. that you just got well, whipped. I, <laughs> You're right, and it I depends mean, how far it is. Too. Well, listen, you're talking about a machine whose stock is a hundred horsepower, and then yeah, one that's hundred, and then one that comes stock with one ninety five, yeah, versus add ons. You know what I mean? So, like, you're adding. Yeah, that's a, what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I still know the RR is going to kick my ass. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, but you, you just want to just try and keep up. That's yeah. all. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's I mean, right now. You can't even. You know. <laughs> yeah, they're going. They're Kaiser Soze. Yeah, they're they're, they're shooting gone. you a message saying, "Yo, bro, <laughs> yeah, our food's you know, here at the diner. Later. What are you doing?" <laughs> you know, even a one seventy two, just you know, uh, even a one seventy two just walks, you know, just walks away. Well, yeah. make sure you send us video of you beating beating that. I want to see it. Yeah, I want to sure. see what it does. I do too, but I'm just, I mean, and you know, I do too. We'll see. Yeah. Um. Go but I just do not want to go the Beltway. I just, I, I'm just. I just don't want to go the beltway. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. How about uh, cab noise and heat? How would you rate that? The heat, cab noise. I'm going to give that a seven. Mm-hmm. It's 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 okay. Mm-hmm. It's not as bad as a Pioneer 1000. I have. Oh, a that's bad. Work. Oh my gosh. You know, for, you know, for work that I would use for work. Yeah. And it it's, it that thing's tough. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I know I have people hit me up saying, hey, man, I just bought my first side-by-side. I bought a Pioneer 1005. I'm like, ooh, you probably should have done a little homework <laughs> before you did that because if you're hauling passengers, they're going to hate it because they're going to get the snot beat oh. out of them. And... Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't buy that. I bought it for work. I have a five, yeah. but I bought it. It's oh, strictly, yeah. Well, I got a, buy, I got a fellow that works with me. He, when, we, when we go to Hatfield, he normally takes it. He well, goes everywhere we go. That's That's but, a bad man. You know. That and the 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 Terex. We took the Terex to Hatfield McCoy one time. Everybody was fighting <laughs> to not, not to drive, drive it. it. It was brand new. It's like who's going to drive Terex? The Terex Four, you mean? Yeah, the Terex Four Seater, the the old older style, not the right. not the KRX. Right. right. Yeah, the KRX. What do you, what that's do you guys badass. Think the KRX. I like the KRX. I think it's badass. We I love drove, the KRX. We, I drove it in California at the intro, and then I drove it. Uh, Tyler and I drove them in Hawaii when we went there for a, a tour, a ride, and uh, we love them. We yeah. do. They're nice. Um, they're big. Hmm. Mm, they're definitely uh, big. But but they got a lot of nice. Uh, I mean, I'm glad to see them doing it. I mean, I, I'm th- that only to me that only brings more to it. Yep. Yep. So, and they're I mean, definitely. I'm not against any one of them. Yeah, they're I mean, definitely I, overbuilt. They're they're built solid. That's yes, for sure. They are. Um, I don't know what the core of the frame is going to be like because, you know, it looks to me like they transferred a lot of the, you know, them big A arms and stuff mm-hmm. they put on that thing. It, I, I'd be a little bit leery. I I, I I'm leery of the the core of it. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know yeah. what you're saying. I, I hope he, I hope they. I hope. I would rather build bend a a arm on my talon than yeah, i would the frame a frame yeah for sure i know what you're saying so i'm did they move i, I mean i hope they did and i doubt I, they're smarter than i am so yeah you know well it's like when you put heavy duty tie rods on there something's gonna give it, if they don't yeah 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 but everybody says reinforce your tie rod or put heavy duty on it mm-hmm. well no you dumbass <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's easier to change a tie rod than it is to fix something else and a whole and, lot cheaper yeah no yeah, doubt whole, you know so you know but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. So we come to our final thing that we're going to have you rate today, and that's going to be the fit and finish, the overall look of the Honda Talon R, craftsmanship, how are the welds look, powder coat holding up. Tell me what you think, scale 1 to 10, and why. I'm going to have to give it a 9 because it's just, other than it's a Honda, I can't say anything. You know, everything fits, everything, the you know, the creases all line up on the door. and, mm-hmm. and I mean, it, uh, you know, Honda's always had a better bolt and thread than other, you know, I've always had trouble with threads on Polaris. Mm-hmm. Honda's, I haven't had any trouble, um, putting the accessories on. You don't strip bolts, just trying to get them out. Yeah. Um, so all their accessories, anything you get from Honda fits pretty good then? Um, it's their, their lower doors could be easier to install. Okay. They fit good when they're done. Good deal. They could be easier. 
Uh, actually, I do have one more question for you, and I forgot to ask you. What did this end up uh, costing you out the door? Feel free if you want to. You can include the price of your turbo too, all bundled up. It's up to you. I'll let, <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you do that. I, I can't give the I can't give that information until I see how much horsepower I get. <laughs> <laughs> um, I paid. I bought mine two weeks for, before Memorial Day in May, and I give eighteen five. Okay. Um, but I just recently bought the new that new uh, Pioneer off of them, so I was able to. Um, you know, I got a pretty good deal at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you can buy them cheaper now. Yeah. And that just burns my ass, but that's another story. Oh yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. When you buy them when they're new and they're hot, you're paying top dollar. Yeah. No doubt about it. Well, I said I wouldn't do that, but then I wanted to go to Hatfield McCoy and I didn't want to ride my pioneers. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I went and did that deal and, 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 but I still got, I still, I still got out cheaper than what, uh, you know, uh, some of the other guys. What they, because they wouldn't cut them none then. That, that's yeah. when they wouldn't cut them at all. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, listen, Paul, we, we really just want to wish you luck with your turbo coming up. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we absolutely appreciate your time talking with us here. And you gave this unit an overall score of 76 out of 100. And we really do appreciate the fair review. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is. That's definitely fair. That is 100% fair. We have some people and they, you know, everybody wants to give it a straight 10 down the board. And yeah. it's like, ah, hey, come on, man. Yeah. So. You know, there yeah. are a, a lot of the things that you're rating. That's, you know, some of the stuff that we were seeing. And I think, you know, later on, whenever we talk to more people, that's what we're going to see is kind of the same rating. So we appreciate it, man. We appreciate your time. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, Paul. Thanks a lot for your time, buddy. We appreciate you and have fun out there on the trail. Thanks, guys. All right. See, see you. Take later, care. Paul. See you. All right. So, Paul. Um, kind of interesting his feedback and mm-hmm. input and what he thinks and what he's noticed and um, it's it's I just can't wait to see what everybody else has to say compared to how things were when we first drove it when yeah. it was brand new out of the gate you know it's just interesting to see everybody's feedback and then what they've done to fix problems like the driveline chatter or mm-hmm. those tires they were crap i don't remember what they were but i know those they tires were max or something but they and i mean we were in the dunes there was a lot whenever we tested out this unit there was a lot going against it i mean it yeah. was they they definitely did not pick the optimal location to test it out and show what the unit could really do and uh you know just hearing him talk about the kicking mm-hmm. and the r i just i mean i didn't experience that whenever we mm-hmm. drove it but i mean who knows maybe he drives a little more aggressive than well I know. you know what else i wanted to ask him about and i forgot is the i4 wheel drive the i4 wheel drive because yeah, if he I've, notices heard, a difference I've heard or not. i've heard a lot back and forth i've heard yeah. you got to get used to it so it'll be interesting uh we got to put that on our question thing because i forgot all about it um till we got done there so the i4 wheel drive is something that i want to know about how's it working out um because i know uh it does wear your brake pads down more mm-hmm. it, it seems to i mean it works on an automobile on the road but that's totally different compared to because like when we were in the sand i felt like it was fighting us it was well, going back and forth it was in the in that in that terrain i felt like it was but mm-hmm. remember we went up over that rock wall mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. remember that one lady in front of us oh. almost shot over the mountain and, yeah, the, yeah. and the guy grabbed a hold of the unit yeah he he was I can't remember his name, but he grabbed a hold know. of a unit that was going over a mountain, and we were both in the cab. We were like, "What the what's, hell are what's you going to do? Are you going to you going to ride it down with him?" He's going with him. <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is. But I yeah, I wasn't impressed with that. No, I I I wasn't. I didn't think it was anything special. I no, mean, no. All right, so Paul's all wrapped up, and let's uh, move on to the next caller. We are ready to rock here with our next rider review. We got Sean Sparkman coming in, age 37, height 5'10", weight 200 pounds. He is from Washington State, and uh, he's going to be reviewing the Talon R here. Yep, he rides all types of trail, track, desert in Washington, Idaho, Oregon, and California. Favorite location is Wallace, Idaho. Um, He's had his R since April. He's got uh, about 2,000 miles on it, and he is also somewhat of a suspension expert. Uh, He said he's done lots of testing in different springs, uh, setups, and he helps other talent owners uh, so that they don't waste their money and Mm -hmm. get their setup dialed in. So this guy sounds like he's going to have some good information. Well, let's get him on a horn here and give old uh, Sean a call here. Yeah, we got to get Sean on a horn because he's got to go to work. Oh, does he? (laughs) Oh, okay. So uh, let's get him on here. Here we go. 
Ringy dingy. Ringy ding. Ring, ring, ring. Yep. Sean, pick up the phone, man. Come on. Yep. Hey. Sean. Hello. Hey, Sean. This is Brian and Tyler. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Brian, Tyler. Doing good. How are you? All right. Good deal. Uh, you got enough time to talk before you have to go to work? I do. I don't have to leave till one thirty my time. It's 12 o'clock. All nice. right. That's awesome. Well, it won't take that long, but uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure we weren't uh, pushing you pressed for time. No, we're good. Yeah, so uh, uh, you got the uh, Talon R, and then you had a Maverick Trail before this. Uh, what made you yep. decide to buy the, the Talon R? So the Talon R was more of, um, my, you know, I grew up racing motocross, and my dad um, always raced desert and Class A truck and buggies. And growing up racing bikes, he always talked about being in a cage, and, you know, when you get older, get in a cage, and we'll do some do some racing Mm -hmm. like he used to and um well long story short my racing career was on the dirt bikes was over and Mm -hmm. uh was out trail riding and some friends of mine had uh some clarises and i jumped in it first time two years ago and fell in love with side by side yeah that's what happens especially when you get a little older yeah the racing stops and the atvs and the dirt bikes and all of a sudden you get into a side by side yep that's exactly what it is the whenever you you get to you get to enjoy the view and and actually adventure ride you know look around and enjoy yourself yeah Yeah. exactly and you can take a passenger you can talk you can haul more gear you can do camping you Mm -hmm. do all kind of cool stuff yep yep so uh, uh I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, you know, you're into the side by side thing now. The 2,000 miles that you have, that you were saying that you had on air, how are those miles? Are they extremely hard miles? Are they uh, easy miles? What were you doing with those miles? I would, I would say all around. So uh, when I first got it, it was um, going out in the trails. Uh, we have a local place up here, and I'm up here in Washington, uh, which is you know normal four by four trails. Um, broke it in doing that, and um, then the very next weekend went straight to a uh, a motocross track where they had a their first year doing a side by side event where we had a drag strip and then had a kind of a I'd call it a drag strip obstacle course so two lanes mirrored each other and um, that was the second weekend on it and literally the the third time out on it was actually on a motocross track doing a um, what they call a sprint race oh, so wow. it was full motocross track and then we went into the woods for about uh i think it was a s- four to seven mile loop wow a total of a 15 minute loop oh, that's cool yeah that's so cool. kind of all around and then i adventure ride out in uh wallace idaho and uh do 100 200 mile rides out there just uh everywhere out there how long have nice. you owned this unit uh, I, I got it the first weekend it was available. I got the I got the first supposedly the first one in Washington that came available. Did you so, have any did you have that? any problems with the uh the radiator, the fan getting wired backwards? So knock on wood, I I have I've had no issues besides the um the bladder caps. So my fan was wired correctly. I've had no uh no seal leaks, no no nothing and I I've driven it pretty darn hard. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you uh, have any accessories on yours? I do. So when I got it, I got it with the bumper kits and um, a half windshield. And then, uh, what, six months into it, now I've upgraded the cage. I instantly upgraded the suspension. That was my first modification. Um, did the spring kits, did the tender kit first. Then when I got onto the motocross track trying to jump the jumps, I know I had to do the main spring change outs um, and was still complaining when I'd go trail riding and, and uh, on, the, on the logging roads, mm-hmm. uh, just felt really rigid and, um, you know, not very pleasant. Uh, so then we finally upgraded the tires and that was it. So my recommendation to anybody that's just enjoying it, you know, out, out trail riding and, and playing tires would be my first if i was to do it all over again it'd be tires then the tender kit okay so i just uh i wanted to ask you this real quick you said that you got the half windshield do you prefer a half windshield over a full windshield uh now um doing everything i've done i would have a full windshield purchase to do my trails and my adventures Mm -hmm. and no windshield at all for uh, the racing because even the half windshield gets roosted and then 
now yeah. that becomes a blind spot. Where I'm trying to look over. Yeah. Yep. So I just remove it now and I clear my goggles. Yeah. Yep. I know what you're saying. A hundred percent. So uh, have you had any issues with this unit yet? The only issues I've had uh, is the, the leaking bladder uh, caps, um, which I just got uh, the suspension back. So I sent it. I had it done by a suspension shop. Uh, I don't know. Am I allowed to say names? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So I got a local race shop up here, Walker Racing Development, mm-hmm. who I met at a, my first race. And uh, he's a, they're pro sprint car drivers. And he's jumped into the suspension business. And he instantly um, checked my charge on my nitrogen. It was good when I, uh, what, the first month I had it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did some revalving for my for my rebound to slow down because, of course, the QS3s don't come with any rebound adjustment. Yeah. Um, so we slowed that down a little bit, and then we put the tender kit on. Um, so um, back to your question of, of any problems, it was just the bladders. Uh what four or five months later i was complaining about uh, a rough ride again and we ended up deciding to send him down to fox to have the warranty done found out my nitrogen was low again and uh got the new caps installed and actually converted my qs3 um you know one two three setting to the actual um high and low speed compression adjustment yeah so i got the clickers now so you didn't have anything that had to get covered under warranty or anything no, knock on wood, nothing, nothing I've had yet, and um, it's been in about six races and three Idaho Wallace trips. With you know, each trip is about three to four hundred miles mm-hmm. through the week we've been there. So, um, punctured tires. The only other thing I've had. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. bringing home any W's in those races? What's the deal? Uh, I I have I've uh, had some local local wins. Um, I've placed uh, top three in the most all the races I've entered up here, and uh, now that we got the rig fully getting it fully race ready for desert, doing the cage upgrade from crash off road, mm-hmm. um, we are going to uh, local shops going to help me out southbound Honda, and we're going to do some uh, really the North Pacific Northwest side by sides. I'd say a little behind. Yeah. So last year it it kind of got a few tracks to get on board like Washougal built a designated side-by-side course the grassroots series oh that's cool and we we did that for the very first time last year and had i think 83 entries Jeez. and and then this year they've completely um dedicated a series and two other tracks jumped on board one in eastern washington um uh, horn rapids uh out in richland and then a place out in Shelton, Washington called The Ridge. They joined together, and they're going to create a Rampage series, 16-round series, a bunch of open practices, and full-on races for side-by-sides. That's awesome. That's cool. Good deal. Yeah. So in your uh, casual trail riding, do you take any passengers along on this uh, that oh, oh, yeah. tell you about the, the passenger comfort? How, what do they say? So my, my father is my main passenger. Um, okay goes you know every every our desert races co-pilot and then our adventure rides he, he we switch off back and forth and driving um my experience and what i've been feedback from friends that go with me um very comfortable um much more uh feels like there's you know much more room than of course the trail model i had mm-hmm. yeah. um and it just feel they, they've commented how they feel safe and especially with the nets in in there um that come stock mm-hmm. they've been no complaints that's um, cool now sitting in some other models like the cowie uh that's the only one i've sat in and said man i, I like the the roomy yeah of this yeah and, and, and the feel yeah um you know i'm five five eleven and uh when i'm sitting in my talent i got the seat to one click from its furthest back position mm-hmm. it's for me to be comfortable and and i I would almost like um, that little bit more more room, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about uh, the storage? Do you storage like, like what you have? Hate what you have? Don't have enough? So what? What I I wish there was more um, cup holders <laughs> locations for yeah. the adventure rides. You yeah. know, um, what have I've experienced? Uh, I definitely w- uh, want to get some um, door bags. You know, mm-hmm. when it comes to the goggles and the glasses or the radio phone yeah. that type of stuff 
Uh, I wish there was more more than just a glove box. Mm-hmm. Um, I modified a, a a husky box from Home Depot and mounted it in the rear of my yeah. of my. Uh, That's something that we that saw. It it fits perfectly back there yeah. too. It it lines up with yep. those holes. Excellent. Yeah, a lot of guys are yep. doing that. There was one uh, from yep. Tractor Supply. I seen a lot of people were using too. Yeah. What uh, I want to yes. I want to know about the uh, the i four wheel drive. You know, I know you probably don't use four wheel drive whenever you're racing. But, uh, oh, we do. <laughs> uh, well, what do you think about it? Do you do you like it? You love it? Um, do you not like it? Does it feel like does it feel like it's fighting itself? What do you think? I think it, it's great. I think it's been it. it you really feel where it kind of starts to activate because you'll you'll notice that you're like, okay, I'm going to start slipping here, and if you give it just a little bit more, you notice you're not spinning out like you would you you naturally feel like you're going to do. You yeah. know, you feel that slight slight slip. So you give it a little more and you think you're going to start spinning tires. Well, next thing you know, you're getting traction in, in different corners. Well, let, um, let me ask you this. Cause you came from the Can-Am to mm-hmm. the Honda. It, whenever you switched over to that I four wheel drive, was it something that you had to learn how to control or is it just something that came naturally to you? You understand what I'm asking? Uh, not sure. I, like whenever you whenever you switched from the Can Am to the uh, to yep. the Talon and you got to the i four wheel drive, did you notice an immediate difference with the four wheel drive system that Honda has? And did it take any like getting used to? I mean, now I know it's second nature, but did you notice like a difference right away with the four wheel drive setup on the Honda? The only thing I can say that stands out in my my mind is the uh, jerkiness or the the touchiness of the throttle. So I don't know if that's because of the i four wheel drive. Or if it's just the, you know, the the bottom end response. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, um, the, the trail was a little tractor that could. I mean, that thing impressed the heck out of me. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but the, the the Talon so far, everything on it. My first time, I actually did some rock climbs uh, this last weekend uh, for the first time, and just really impressed with. You know, the traction, and, and, you know, it could be the tires, too. You know, mm-hmm. I've upgraded the tires. Yeah. I upgraded to the 32-inch um, chicanes and just super impressed with the wet weather we have up here. We got mud and the wet rocks, and I'm I'm chugging along up and over, you know, rocks that. Nice, I'm nice. That's four, perfect. Four went by over. Yeah. Well, Tyler's going to go down uh, uh, some a list of stuff here that we're going to score, and we're going to score it from 1 to 10. 1 okay. meaning it sucks, and 10 uh, is uh, meaning that it's uh, excellent. No improvement needed whatsoever. So, you mm-hmm. know, there's no machines out there that are all 10s and none out there that are all 1s. So, uh, oh, for sure. You know, just uh, rate it accordingly. So, uh, mm-hmm. so to start off, I wanted to ask you, what's it, what did this unit cost you out the door? Uh, well, re- what well, retails 20, 20 grand mm-hmm. for the R and nineteen nine so ninety nine and twenty nine for uh, X versus the R. So and, uh, twenty grand. Yeah, we'll say we'll say twenty grand. Okay, that sounds about right. Um, now we're gonna start off interior comfort. Uh, overall, you feel like the placement of cup holders, the screen. How do you feel sitting inside of the cab? Scale one to ten. How do, how would you rate the interior comfort of the Honda Talon R? Compared to the three other ones I've been in, uh, I would say seven. Seven. All right. And then, how about uh, reliability? Have you had anything go wrong, or needed any kind of service or warranty, or has it been pretty reliable? I'd say when it comes to the Honda itself, mm-hmm. I'm giving it I'm giving it a ten. Okay, I've had absolutely no issues. Now yeah, that's something to... everybody says that man. Mm-hmm. It's it's a Honda thing. Honda's yeah, Honda just, gets a ten yeah. all the way across the board and reliability. They are always consistent. Doesn't matter what they come out with. It yep. is going to be reliable. There's no doubt about it. How yep. about ease and maintenance? Uh, for me, I, I'm I'm mechanically inclined, so you know, I, I grew up wrenching my whole life. So. I do all my own services. Uh, to me, everything is very easy and accessible. You know, you're not breaking tabs to get to things. Um, I did the I did the gauge relocate kit, and everything myself was just easy access. Um, no hidden bolts, so I I would give it. I'd give it a, t- a nine ten. Okay, I'll meet you in the middle. Call it nine point five. There you go. And then, uh, how about the the handling? 
Where would you rate so, that and why? Handling, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a uh, a six out the okay. out the box. Okay, yeah, yeah, and and that's due to springs. This to me, I think whatever they tested for however long they tested it before they're releasing it. I honestly, my personal opinion is we didn't get what they what they were actually testing. The mm-hmm. springs are just way too um, rigid mm-hmm. and stiff, yeah, and short short traveled. And you know, for for the R model, I think they really should have stepped up like like Yamaha did and given you the full adjustability of mm-hmm. compression and rebound. Yeah. What do you What do you think about how's it track at high speed? What do you think about that? I, I'm very impressed with it. I feel very confident being full throttle. Um, you know, coming from two wheels going to four, now I had to learn to, to worry about, you know, four corners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, being wide open in the woods with trees that I'm barely fitting in between, I'm, I'm very confident with how this thing uh, tracks. And then on the, on the logging roads, you know, loose gravel out here, roots, wide open. I, I'm very confident in uh, getting this thing sideways and, and steering with the skinny it, yep, yep, <laughs> yep yep yeah now uh, you know talking about going fast what do you think about the power of this unit uh i i think it's it's good i don't think it's great but i think it's definitely good i know it definitely favors the let's be reliable and not push our limits mm-hmm. that honda you know we know honda does um i i would like to have seen you know, a few more ponies to to be for sure, you know, competitive. Granted that you do have the direct transmission, so you don't lose as much horsepower through a belt. Um, did you want me to rate the power? Yeah, yeah good, asking? please. Yep, one through ten. Give us what you think. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it an 7.5. Okay. okay, all right. Are you going to get a turbo? So I rode in the turbo for uh three weeks ago and i knew i was going to be impressed i knew i was going to feel some power Mm -hmm. but i was amazed really it 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 set me back i've ridden in a lot of race cars Mm -hmm. (laughs) with yeah you know hopped up turbos and this thing set me back in my seat and my mouth dropped you know i knew i was gonna say wow but i was not expecting to drop my mouth and say I got to get this really for, for six grand. Uh, you better uh, drop more than your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that is the downfall. That is very much the downfall. Uh, uh, granted, uh, you know, the, the power's there. It was, it was, it was a wow factor. Uh, now when the I four wheel drive, when you have the turbo, uh-huh. you really notice how well the four wheel drive activates yeah because mm-hmm. the first day i i did it was on a friday and it was wet asphalt i was expecting to break loose get sideways say say oh crap and let's not let's not slide into the fence yeah no this thing grabbed and goed like it was on dry pavement yeah wow wow and that was very impressed with that uh, i liked it so much i had to grab my dad and bring him back to the shop with me the next day on saturday and say let's go for another ride because it's it was suns out and the dry pavement was out and yep nice. definitely want one now my only thing is i want to race the national naturally aspirated class yeah for a while until yeah. you know i get get better and then maybe we'll jump into the turbo you know yeah. in the future how about that uh suspension i know you were saying you were doing a lot of modifications but how would you rate that yep. out of the box a- out of the box i'm i'm gonna give it a five yeah okay it, it, it works uh it's reliable but the settings the one two three settings to me my personal opinion one and three were were worthless so two is the only one to go with mm-hmm. uh one you can literally jump on the bumper push on the bumper and bottom the thing out yourself three it doesn't move yeah so let me ask you this all these people that are looking at getting these turbos and they're not messing with the suspension I think that kind of defeats the purpose because you can't use all those you horses. Go fast yeah. yeah, yeah, you, you're gonna. You, you think? Go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, something's gonna give, you know, because it's right. You can't, you can't have, you know, one or it's the gotta other. It's got to be the full package. Yeah. You can't be like, 
Well, right. I'm going to beef up all my A-arms and not do nothing with the tie rods, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you right. you, ha- you have Thumbs to have down. constantly upgrading it, especially whenever, you know, people look at the pricing of a turbo and, you know, some of them are 30 grand, but what they don't take into consideration is with all that horsepower, everything is becomes overbuilt. You get yeah. bigger A-arms, bigger shocks, bigger tie rods. Everything right. is built to support all the horsepower that that unit is putting out. Mm-hmm. Right. And you got the guys that want to be wrench racers and want the numbers behind them. Mm-hmm. But yeah. What it comes down to, you know, the second weekend I owned this thing, uh, I, I was a little leery of going, but I went out to the, the race course where it was a drag strip obstacle course, and I, I beat turbo rigs due to suspension mm-hmm. versus horsepower. Yeah. yeah. So I was able to maneuver over the obstacles and get sideways around the corners without tipping over mm-hmm. and making it to the finish line first. And yes, this person did have more horsepower than me. So really, you got you got to ask yourself, what are you going to do? Yeah, what, yeah. you know, what are you going to use this for? Are you going to be a dune guy that y- you can go in a straight line all you want, and well, horsepower is what you want. Yeah. Or do you want comfort and handling performance because you're weaving in and out of trees, or you're weaving in and out of corners, mm-hmm. and you don't want to roll over? Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, it's you know. That's that's something that you really got to weigh your options on what you're going to do and what's more important to you, you know. Right. Yeah. So, and we all know. Go ahead. We, you, we all know every, everybody's first year out with any machine doesn't matter how much R and D they did. There's always going to be issues. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, the customers are going to do the R and D. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so how do you so, feel? How do you feel about the turning radius on that? I know you probably don't do a. I mean probably some of those places you get into some tight wooded areas like we've ridden in wallace idaho and uh, yep. how do you feel about the turning radius on that or to be honest with you, if i had the money i would love an x uh-huh. for 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 the adventure rides and the trail rides yeah okay um and so you know the r yep three point tur- three point turns are definitely happening in the tight woods yeah okay um All right. so how would you break that the turning radius of the R? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Mm. Uh, <laughs> he has to think about that. Uh, one. You're you're getting a sixty eight. So if I'm going to compare it to a sixty eight seventy inch rig, I'm going to give it an eight because you know that's what you got. You got a you got a wide rig. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. See, and a lot of people don't take that into consideration how wide and how long the unit is as yeah. well. Um, right. You know, there it's hard to have a, a good sport side by side that you know turns on a dime. Yeah. So. Right. Whenever you're. And what in a, I like. Go ahead. What I like on the fly, you you push the button and throw it in two wheel drive. Now I can pop the throttle and get the rear end to spin around. Yeah. Versus having to stop, put it in neutral, or slow down to you know that you can you can go in and out of four wheel drive. Yeah. Anytime you want. Mm-hmm. which you know that i'm gonna i'm gonna give that a 10 for for convenience and and accessibility mm-hmm. now we you know you were talking about having a half windshield and then getting roosted mm-hmm. and not being able to see over your half windshield with no windshield on there what is your line of sight like your visibility whenever you're going around corners turns uh out both side doors the rear over the hood what do you think where would you rate that at and why I would say that depends on the driver. You know, I got my dad who likes to feel like he's in the rig. Yeah. Me being a motocrosser, I feel like I want to be on the rig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually like a, a little one inch uh, spacer on the rear rear of my seat to get me propped up a little bit higher. Yeah. Uh, but granted, being able to see, you know, barely look over the door and see my tires very easy. I have five point harness. I can still, you know, maneuver and see my my corners. Um, so I'm going to say views, you know, nine, 10, I, no issues. Okay. All right. So you got the five point. Yeah, I went with five point. Okay. I, know, I, I plan on, I plan on jumping it on, on full motocross jumps. That's okay. right. Well, you well, got the cage. I ha- have been, so. You got the cage and the harness, let her eat. You're ready to wreck just in yep. case, huh? Yeah. So how about that yeah. cab noise and heat? How do you feel about that? Is it too loud, too hot, not so hot? So the rig itself, quiet okay Uh, we can talk talk no problem uh rattles the only complaint i have is the doors okay the door bumpers um are it's just twenty thousand dollar rig i should not hear rattling doors now it does have an adjustable bumper uh one side had to be fully maxed out one side has to be was halfway and i have to almost slam my door to get it to 
to lock properly. And yes, I have adjusted the hmm. the latch mechanism mm -hmm. to three different spots, and one did make it better, but it never went away yeah. unless I unless I slam it. Um, of course, on the forums, a guy actually went to Home Depot and got a, a door bumper that fit right on there mm -hmm. to make it a little little bulkier. Yep. Did that, did that, and problem solved. Yep. Yeah, that's what the guy, uh, right, actually the guy before we called you, he was saying, you know, it cost me a dollar fifty to fix a problem that mm -hmm. was driving me nuts. For 20 grand. Yep. Yeah, for, <laughs> yeah. And they were just, and you know what, doors are, it's hard to, a, a lot of doors rattle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just a Honda thing. It's not Polaris thing. I mean, there is, it seems like doors, doesn't matter what you do, something always comes loose somewhere along the way, mm -hmm. and it rattles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. And anybody installing the lower doors, you know, you you got to make sure you, you cut out those knockouts perfectly, um, you know, a, a little further than what the, the, the pre marks are. Yeah. Because if we, we cut it dead right on the line mm -hmm. and it made the door to where it didn't quite bend in enough for the rubber to touch. So then it rattled. Yeah. So I took it back apart, shaved a little bit more off, and now it's complete. I com never, I, I just, silent. I will yeah. never understand why companies go with a half door. One, thank you. I mean, one, exactly. Listen, I think I understand what they're going for. Like with Honda, they told us that they were going after that C CFR, the, the motocross. The CF, CF moto. C or no, CF. What was it? Uh, the dirt bike. The CFR, right? CFR? Yeah. The CFR. Yeah. yeah. They were yeah. going after the CFR style, and they wanted the plastic to flow like it does on a, on a bike, which I understand what you're going for. Aesthetically, it does look good, but it defeats the purpose of the unit. Those half doors, it's a way yes, for them to sucks. continue to make money off of something that they should have already supplied for $20,000, in my opinion. Yeah. I agree 100%. Yeah. And then before you got the half doors on there, what did you think about the gas? Actually, hold on. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead yep. of myself. What was the rating on your cab noise and cab heat before I forget? I know that you just talked about that. Oh, so cab noise, we'll we'll, we'll do a uh, we'll do an eight because all around sounds good, can hear each other, but uh, you, you got to fix the rattle, the doors. Yeah, yeah, eight. So what I was going to ask you, cab, cab, oh, sorry, cab heat. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the only you know I've only ridden three other rigs. Um, I got a little overheated riding in the Can Am. Uh, granted in the winter, that was nice, but in the summer it was warm. Yeah. The Honda, I ha I know you feel a little bit of, of warmth. I would not say much heat coming through the shift, um, console. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to give it an eight. You do get a little heat, but it's nowhere near where I, mm -hmm. I don't have to take my sweatshirt off cause I'm burning up. Okay. Okay. All right. So what I was going to ask you was the placement of the gas cap before you put the, those lower sub doors on. Oh, uh, yep. The other half door. What did you? What do you think about the placement of that gas cap? Uh, personally, I, I like having it in because when you're out mudding around, it's it's staying clean. Um, I mean, like as far because we ran into the problem where whenever we didn't have the we didn't have lower doors mm -hmm. on, we had it was just a half door. Our uh, front right tire was throwing mud all mud and sand all over our gas cap. Then we had to dig the gas cap out, and whenever we took it off, yep. there was actually debris yep. falling into the gas tank. Yeah, correct. Yeah, uh, so I didn't get to experience much uh, flying mud uh, with the half doors off. Yeah, so I didn't get experience that, but. That's the exact reason why I'm glad it's in the cab, yeah. but with those half doors, and yes, that, that is one rating I will have to give them a lower rating on, is I wish the fenders actually, mm -hmm. at least on the R, I wish the fenders flares actually were a little more <laughs> yeah. doing their job. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't have to go out and purchase accessories to extend the flares that are already there. Well, yeah. that's actually going to roll us into our uh, last question here, the fit and finish, the overall aesthetic look of the unit. Uh, powder coat, is it holding up? Do the welds look good? The craftsmanship that went into it? Scale 1 to 10, where would you rate this unit at and uh, why? Uh, craftsmanship, welds, uh, I'm going to give it a 10 because I am I inspect my rig. I'm, I'm tedious about my rigs. Pressure wash clean and inspect. Uh, knock on wood, I've had no, no issues at all, no weak points that I've seen. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to fender flares, I wish, at least on the R model, they would have extended it out a little bit more to give you better, uh, you know, um, mud flying up protection. Yeah. Um, 
Mm-hmm. I love the look. Now, granted, what I it finally made sense to me the the cat the cage did not flow with the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. And yeah. you know, then once then once they came out with the, the four wheel, you know, the four seater, then it then it made sense. Okay, they just chopped it in half. Mm-hmm. I wish they would have made it, given it that nice racy CRF look that they said they wanted. Yeah, yeah. On the on the cage, you know. Now that I got the the crash off road cage on on my rig, this thing is is gorgeous yeah nice before it looked like i had a nice race car on the bottom and on top was a uh a four by you know let's go four by jeep yeah yeah Yeah, no doubt yeah so you gave this unit an overall score of 80 which uh puts it in the b category that's about falling right in line with everybody else's score and uh we appreciate an honest review yeah yeah for sure yeah all right anybody out there that anybody that out there's listening I'd say, you know, if you're complaining about the comfort of the ride, uh, my personal opinion is the, the small sidewalls of, of those Max's 27-inch tires makes a very rigid ride. Mm-hmm. If yeah. you're not wanting to go out and buy the, the, the springs, you will be very pleased in buying tires first. Mm-hmm. And then if you want more, then do the tender kit. Yeah. I, know, I noticed much more with a tire upgrade than the, um, than the suspension. Well, you're the third person that yeah. we've hit so far, and all three of you said the tires suck, and you upgraded. Hey, man, and you it know, made a big difference. You know what? That's the first place companies cut costs is yep. tires. Yep. Because it's oh, for sure. As yeah. soon as it's the cheapest, easiest thing, uh, right out of the door, they want the smallest, cheapest way that they can do it to save money. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The one, I went thirty twos. Yeah. I went thirty twos, and if I were to do it over again, I'd go with the thirties. Yeah. Uh, the thirty twos do feel a, a little heavy. Um compared to you know coming off the stocks mm-hmm. um so my race tires are going to be uh the 29 and 30 inch size uh, okay. the 32s are going to be my my adventure play ride i want to make sure i have a good clearance over rocks yeah yeah. yeah for sure yeah exactly all right sean well i think that about wraps it up buddy we appreciate you taking time to talk to us and uh give us your feedback on the talon yeah, thank you, guys. Love watching you, and uh, keep up the good work. All right, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, buddy. Take care. Take care. All right, bye. 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 <clears throat> All right, so Sean had a lot of good info, and it all, I mean, it falls right in line with what – Everything, uh, I'll tell you what, this is probably the, the only unit so far where – all three of the people that we've interviewed so far, all their scores are almost identical. And they've all complained about the same thing. Same thing. And they've all gave kudos to yeah. almost the same thing. Yep, they did. It's definitely impressive. And I just wanted to touch on the half door thing. Mm. That is the stupidest thing. I'm not a fan of the half doors. I'm not a fan of the nets like uh, nets are, on a on a oh, defender. I can't stand nets. The Can Am Defender yeah. HD ten that we have. I hate the nets. Hate them. And I'm on a couple sets now yeah. because they get ripped up. You know, yeah. I just don't man, I just don't like them. Uh, I think you gotta get those full doors, not yeah. a half door, not a net. The, Nothing half ass because you know they're planning on selling it after they sell you the Yeah. Unit. So listen, what I what I want to get from a from anybody who's going to, you know, manufacture any type of side by side, what I think they should do. I mean, one, I understand what they're going for. Aesthetically, mm-hmm. they want it to look badass. Yeah. It already does. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's like some of these, you know, you got 180 horsepower mm-hmm. and this thing just looks like it's ready to eat anything, but yeah. you got half doors on it. Yeah. Like you need to think more about the the purpose the principle mm-hmm. of it and not so much oh well let's put half doors on it you know what i mean one just trying to save money or, yeah and, or anything and the, you know the funny thing is when we would did the intro uh you know honda told us that they spent like 43 million dollars or 45 million dollars on r&d like on r&d and developing this thing mm-hmm. like 40 some million dollars I mean, just stretch a little bit more. Well, what they're trying to do is make that money back. Yeah, and, and sell half accessories. Doors and yeah. they, and you know what is crazy? Some of the, a lot of the people will say they'll tell you, "Oh yeah, we make all of our money on accessories." Oh, accessories, well, I know that, and and parts, parts and accessories. Servers, you know, I know, yeah. who, I know the number one company. That, yeah. that is by that motto. <laughs> and they'll come out and say it publicly, and they don't care. People still buy their shit. <laughs> and and the thing of it is, is like there's so many aftermarket companies out there making as good or better stuff than a lot Very of manufacturers. True. So sometimes they're just like killing themselves because they could have had to sail up front. Yep. Or, and, or like, you you know, with your shocks and everything, with and your suspension. Whenever, so like whenever Talon first came out, the only people that offered the half doors for the Talon was Honda. Yeah. And it's so expensive whenever you buy yep. a manufacturer's stuff 
And like, I mean, I, I know some of the other stuff's out there expensive, but the one guy said that he finally bought some doors from another company that, that manufactures them. Yep. But how long did it take for them to manufacture it them? It takes a while. And, and the while. price is probably still going to be a little bit cheaper than if you would have got it from Honda. It's well, just, yeah, it's, I mean, that box is like $700. I know. It's just like if you hold on long enough, you're going to get a turbo for three grand. Yeah. You know, but but it's just like when you, you buy that unit brand new, you buy it now, you want it now, you want to go riding. You, you you don't care how much it costs. The manufacturers know that. They do. You it's, know, guys just have no patience. Yeah. They don't read directions until something goes wrong. They pull it out and then they look at it. They yeah. have no patience. Yep. They adjust their uh, thought uh, process on what they want to get and when mm-hmm. they want to get it according yep. to I'm going to go riding. Yep. You know, your boys call you up, you want to go riding, what you are you going to do? Go, man. You're going to spend the money. Hell yeah. All right, guys, that wraps it up with Sean. We are going to move on and uh, see who the next caller is here. It's my first time. What you got going on <laughs> over there, bro? It's my first time. Dang on. I mean... <laughs> I'm gonna have to get my, a special. Uh, this microphone. is my first uh, podcast. I'm kind of nervous. Nice, nice. Well, welcome to the studio. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. I I'm appreciate that. Glad you're uh, here with us. Yeah. You're just a little wired out. Well, I do what I can. You know, it's hard to keep up with you. Oh, you know, I don't. You cast know such a big that. shadow, even though you're a giant four foot three. You know I don't what I mean? Think so. It's it's a monstrous shadow. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Speaking of shadow, uh, our next uh, caller is Jesse Robinson, uh, age fifty four. Weight. 285, height 511. And uh, he is from uh, Georgetown, Delaware. And let's see, he rides um, Delaware State Wildlife Area, Hatfield McCoy. Owned his Talon R since September 2019 and has 300 miles on it, which I think we rode with him and put. Uh, most of those miles on when we were at Hatfield McCoy with him. We did. And a uh, little background here. Jesse is a off-road family member, um, and the Talon was his first side-by-side. Yeah. Yep, yep. very first side-by-side. Yeah. So if uh, if you all don't know what we're talking about when we talk about off-road family member, there's two private groups that we have, one on Facebook, one on YouTube, and they're paid groups. They're four ninety nine a month, and then you get to mm-hmm. be a part of the group. You get all kind of cool stuff like invites to rides, behind the scenes footage. As a matter of fact, we saw we shot a behind the scenes deal for this whole thing we're doing here. While today. we were while we were in between phone calls here, we actually just shot something. Yeah, kind of explain some of the pictures on the wall and uh, the reference of it. Uh, we we do this in our in our man cave in the basement of the house yeah. and uh on on our stage got a nashville sign behind us so you guys listen to the on the podcast try and paint the picture for you yeah orange walls <coughs> nashville sign bunch of pictures mm-hmm. here we are two dudes sitting at a mic talking two, about two rednecks trying to figure life out you know what i mean yeah let us know if you figure it out we'd like to hear about it <laughs> i'd like to interview you ask you questions how'd it work you know maybe we'll get you on here yeah no <laughs> doubt all right guys let's get jesse up on the pipe here and and see what he's got to say about his talent. Oh my. You think he's nervous? I think <laughs> he ain't nervous. I think he's nervous. He ain't nervous. He ain't even gonna pick up. He probably ain't. <laughs> Jesse. Hey man, how are you? Hey, hey Jesse. It's Brian and Tyler. What's up, my man? Oh, another day. Just got off work not long ago. Laura and I are sitting here at the table. Oh, nice. Oh. Good deal. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. nice. Are you having some Edwards chocolate pies? Ooh. Uh, now, you know, now we don't have too many Edwards chocolate pies. That's only when you guys are, we're going to see you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we and do it, enjoy yeah. them. And they well, don't last very long. No. Yeah. It's funny you, you ask that because uh, as, as you ask that, Laura's shaking her bowl because she just had a bowl of ice cream. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Was that before dinner? Ice cream before dinner? Yeah. Yes, that's before dinner. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, that's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's it sounds just, like it sounds like we're at the wrong location. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be there in Delaware. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. Can you can you hear me okay on this phone? Oh yeah, we got you pretty good. We got you good. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna you know BS with you here for a little bit and talk to you about your talent and all the cool stuff, likes, dislikes, and everything. But first of all, what made you want to decide to buy the talent over everything else out there? Why'd you go with the talent? Well, there was there was there was a couple reasons, and 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 I know you've seen it. Uh, I, I was actually looking at a Can Am. Uh huh. And the reason I was looking at the Can Am because it was really comfortable. Yeah. Um, and I hadn't seen a talent, you know, firsthand yet. Um, so we, we, Laura and I, we went, we went looking and, uh, uh, we sat in a Terex, uh, 
we we uh, sat in a an X three. Um, what else? We, uh, oh, uh, a Maverick Sport. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We liked the Maverick Sport. We were we were on the you know that was that was one of the ones that we were on the fence with too. Mm-hmm. Um, the first X three I liked because it had it had all everything that you could add to it was already on there. So we had to buy accessory after accessory after accessory when I first purchased it. Yeah, yeah. And we went to the dealer where uh, we we bought a few of our four wheelers from, and uh, they had two of them, two Hondas uh, in stock. And uh, we drove the Terex. Um, we drove the uh, we we actually drove the X. We drove the X first, mm-hmm. and, and we drove this one. And uh, we, we you know I'm a big guy, so I I, uh, I fit good. And then uh, we ended up we ended up buying it. That's cool. Um, and I've always been, you know, I've had a lot of Honda, you know, ATVs over the years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and we still have one, and it has always been reliable. Yeah. So, uh, so reliability is probably one of the main reasons you bought that machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's yeah, that's the main reason. Not dumping money in it right away, you know. And uh-huh. uh huh. And I did like the fact that it had the, you know, the, the DCT transmission. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, no belts. Yeah. So you know, I don't know if that's you know good or bad yet. It's still kind of, I guess, early to tell. Yeah. Yeah. So what you said you were talking about accessories. Did you put any accessories on your unit yet? Uh, yeah, I've I've put a few. I put uh, lower doors. I uh, put the lower doors on. I bought uh, beadlock rims, um, and I bought um, uh, thirty-two inch tires, rockabillies. Mm-hmm. Nice. And, uh, yeah, and, and uh, it looks nice. You know, it rides pretty good. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, and I, Laura just was, I'm getting close to my birthday and Laura ordered me a uh, a shift gate. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. So, When's your birthday, uh, Jesse? Uh it's March 2nd. Oh okay. my. Right around that's, the corner. That's coming up, man. Yeah, wow. What are you Yeah. What are you going to be like 22, 23? Yeah, yeah. Somewhere I'll, around I'll, there. I'll, I'm I'll, just I'll kidding. I know you're in your mid 30s. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be double nickels. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Yeah, double nickels. I like that. Didn't you uh, get a windshield for that too? Uh, Laura and I are going to order. We were up in the air. Which one? We, you know, we weren't sure if we should. At first, we was thinking, well, the half windshield looks pretty cool. Uh huh. I was like, well, you know, that that flip up windshield that uh, Super ATV makes looks pretty promising. Yeah, that power flip. The power flip windshield is is really nice uh from super atv from what i'm told i use the ones from can am and that i love it that's my favorite windshield and then all the guys that have seen that video said mm-hmm. that that power flip windshield from super atv they love it as well so you know you get a little bit of air in you get a lot of air in if it gets muddy you open it up and uh like when we went riding at hatfield mccoy it was freezing so you know you could just put it down yeah 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 and in those days we were there i think uh it was really it was kind of bad in the morning Mm-hmm. But when we got riding in the in the wood, you know, up on the mountains, it wasn't too bad. I didn't think. Yeah, yeah. And as the day went on, it was, it was uh, a lot better. What the hell yes. are you doing, Jesse? Are you eating ice cream too? <laughs> I yeah, think he's eating yet. chips. Actually, I eat a lot of ice cream now. If it was a bag of pretzels, we'd be fighting over. <laughs> Listen, I I was gonna talk to you about the the half windshield. We did a a video on wind. Well, Dad did a video on windshields and showed the half windshield and it's on the maverick trail that we have and i took that maverick trail out for a ride and it gave me a headache because of the contour of the windshield and it made the ground look weird and um it was just it's yeah you know the half windshield i really don't see the purpose behind it so um with the half windshield you know i'm i'm guessing that the, that they put a curve in it i guess so the air yep yep air so I'm guessing if you look right through that curve, it probably magnifies things or it, it does funny things with your eyes. It's it like does. looking through a fish tank, man. It sucks. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah, well, I was kind of worried because Laura's you know a little sh- shorter than I am, so you know I, I didn't know if she would be look like looking right at the edge. Probably. Sure that, uh, yeah. Probably. Wow. Well. Yeah. I would <laughs> recommend going with a full windshield, in my uh, opinion. Yeah. I, especially if it's the power flip that power flip can, is badass man that's the best of all worlds the only thing uh doesn't have a windshield wiper on it but i've heard you can make a windshield yeah. wiper kit and put on them so yeah. that'd be cool yeah and, and uh the uh there's a you know like it's, it's still kind of limited on some of the stuff that you can buy it's not been around as long as the other ones you know like the maverick or the or the polaris yeah you can buy you can buy everything but a new razor and an accessory you know yeah but yeah uh, 
it's a uh, you know that there's a few glass windshields mm -hmm. that uh that we like and you can actually get a you can get a wiper with them oh yeah and you know i don't know if uh but then you're stuck with a solid windshield well so that's care. that's great but on my rc i love that windshield with a wiper for the winter I am not a fan of it for the summer. It gets mm -hmm. too hot. It just it just keeps out too much air. But it's great when it's raining. Mm -hmm. Man, that windshield wiper on there, or when you get mud on there, yeah, it's you just hit it with the juicer, and it just cleans it right off. Yeah. I got you. Now, I, I, when we rode to Hatfield, you had just installed the uh, the power flip-up yeah. windows. Yep. That, that, that was really nice. Yeah, I love that one. That's my favorite. We were that's, up till like 2 in the morning putting them in, too. Yeah. And then we got up at 7 a.m. In that thunderstorm <laughs> in a trailer. <laughs> yeah. hard to, we're holding Cold flashlights Cold as shit outside. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was not a pretty sight. But, hey, it paid off the next day. It definitely did. Yeah. yeah. And, and I remember telling the story, you know, in the morning about those windshields, you know, about you in the middle of the night. You were in your trailer, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Putting it together in the trailer. Hardly yeah. any room. Yeah, that hardly was Hardly any light. Yeah, and it was raining, right? Oh, yeah, it was raining. thunder! It was terrible thunder, lightning. We're in an aluminum trailer, yeah. all aluminum. What's uh, what's uh? Have you had any issues with your unit yet so far? No, I haven't had any problems with it. Um, I have over over three hundred miles on it, and uh, I got a. It's uh, I, I have to do a service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, the service is kind of um, I don't want to say funky, but it's got it's got internal filters, mm -hmm. which I did. That means you got you know it doesn't have a spin on oil filter or mm -hmm. the uh, the DC I think the other one's the DCT filter mm -hmm. yeah so you actually have to take the plates off and remove the filter and put them back um, I don't know if it's a good bad thing I'll 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 I'll, I'll revisit that one <laughs> yeah what about uh, storage on the unit what do you think about that um it, it doesn't have very much yeah it, it that Terex now, I'll tell you, that thing had them big old boxes in the back. Yeah, oh, I know. That's you, like a crew cab. <laughs> you could put like a midget mariachi band in those uh, storage <laughs> containers on that Terex. Hell yeah. That's it. I could like shove a kid in there and get in for free. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> drive in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what about what about um passenger comfort? What does Laura think about passenger comfort as far as this unit goes? Laura says thumbs up. So Thumbs up. Good. That's so good she's, for Laura. She said, she, "Don't." She probably got a mouthful of ice cream. Look yep. at him, like, oh yeah. Oh, she's chiming in. She said, "No, I don't." Yeah. Nothing but love, Laura. Nothing but love. Come on, Tyler. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Tyler going to ruin the pie. I know, right? Uh, so, how about that air filter? Have you had any uh, issues or had to change it yet? Because we've heard a lot of people that have them. Uh, I heard of one guy had a major issue because he drove down the road in a, a storm and it was raining. And it filled the whole thing up because of the way it's designed. And then a lot of people are saying that, you know, you don't get much mileage out of the filter. And then it costs 40 or 50 or some places $60 mm -hmm. to get them to get a new one. Yeah, I think the filter's... I think I think when I checked here it's fifty six dollars, mm -hmm. and um, I had mine was okay, but we when, when we rode so we rode you know uh, it's maiden voyage was here around here, but mm -hmm. the real road it was when we were all at Hatfield McCoy, mm -hmm. uh, and it, when I got home it was muddy, but the filter was okay, but I'm I'm going to change it when I change the oil. Yeah, and I've read that. Now some people are putting um, basically like a pre filter yeah. on the inside. Yeah, um, it's. Re I, I'm gonna kind of look into that because mm -hmm. the filter can get pretty expensive. I've read that, and the particle separators are expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's expensive. a lot of guys running them, and they say it makes a difference. But mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's so, a couple companies that make it. Yeah, yeah. I so don't know if, I don't know if you've seen it, but that Jackson Racing, mm -hmm. they just started. They're, they're, they have released their turbo for the town. Oh, so, how much is that? Uh, fifty eight hundred dollars. Oh, okay, around yeah, six right grand. around, yeah, right around the same price. Yep, that's yeah. what everybody's saying. Six yeah. grand, yeah. Now there's another company that has one. And I can't remember the name. I think want to say it's around thirty five hundred. See, uh, told you. Yeah, hang out there long enough. Somebody's yep. gonna make somebody, it cheaper. Somebody, somebody is definitely gonna make it cheaper there. Yep. That's always a fact. That's always gonna happen. Yep. 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 All right. Well, Tyler's gonna get to some questions here for you, Jesse, and uh, we're gonna have you rate them from one to ten. One sucks. Ten is excellent, 
And uh, just be fair across the board, there's no machine out there that's perfect tens and none that are perfect one. Mm -hmm. There's always a machine that shines somewhere along the line. Yep. But we're going to start out with interior comfort, overall design, you know, dash panel display, uh, cup holders. How do you feel sitting inside this cab, uh, one through ten? How would you rate that? Um, thinking about it, I'd, I'd probably have to go with a seven. Um, yeah, there, the, I don't like where the uh, the speedometer is yeah. right in the center. I kind of wish it was on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of have to look away to see what if you're in manual mode, auto mode, how yeah. fast you're going. You know, I didn't, I didn't like that. Uh, I like the cup holders. Cup holders are okay. Mm -hmm. Got two cup holders. Yep. Um, it's and it's 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 actually pretty comfortable. Um, you know, you know I'm a big guy, but uh, you know, Laura and I get in there and we're we're pretty comfortable. That's cool. Know? That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so, how about uh, reliability? You haven't you haven't had any problems with it yet, but uh, yeah. what do you, what do you think about that? Uh, with just what I know, I'd have to I'd have to give that a nine because I, I don't I haven't had any problems. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of what I what I do know now, I, I knew when I bought it because I, I read enough about it. Yeah, uh, you know, like the air filter, the the oil filter. I, I already knew that, but. You know, it has a, it has a bit of problem. Yeah. So uh, you touched on this a little bit earlier. What do you think about the maintenance side of things? Uh, scale one to ten, ten being the easiest thing to work on, one being the most difficult thing to work on. Uh, what do you think? I'm I'm going to go go down to seven on that, just because of the oil filters, and also the, to refill the oil is up where the uh, uh, air filter is. You have to take the air filter cover off, to put the oil back in. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, how about handling? Uh, let's go an eight with the handling. Okay. Uh, Tracking well at high speeds and all that good stuff. Well, yeah, it, it does. Um, there was a couple of things. Um, one was the, uh, and I think I'd ask you, Brian, about this is that when you turn it, when you put have it in, have the eye fool drive on uh -huh. and you're right, say like we have a long dirt road and it's got, it's kind of sandy. Mm-hmm. When that I four wheel drive is on, it's kind of like it wants to pull left, pull right, pull left, pull right, pull left, pull right. And, and I think you had said you had kind of felt that when you had drove. It. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I felt when I uh, drove it in the dunes out there uh, in Utah when we test drove them. Uh, I felt the same way. I thought it was fighting itself. Yeah, and, and, and but if it's not in four wheel drive, you don't feel that. But it's only mm -hmm. when it's in four wheel drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but it's not bad. It's just it's kind of like correcting the steering wheel all the time, I guess so to say. If, yeah, if, that's if, what I felt. I was seesawing back and forth trying to bring it back. And that's yeah. what I felt. I felt the same thing. Yeah, and and the other thing is uh, when we first got it, we first started riding. It, I think it had entirely too much air in the tires. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it rode really tough when we were out there. Well, you, know, uh, I, you switched up tires too, so you probably got a. Everybody saying once you switch the tires, you get a whole different performance out of it. Yeah, these tires, these tires are you know these Rockabilly tires are they're a lot lot smoother riding. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. That's gonna be way better than what was on it. Those ones that are on are junk. Yeah, they definitely Nobody are. Nobody likes them. Everybody we've talked to said they hated them. Yeah, thin yeah. sidewall wanting to roll. Uh, yeah, they're just they're not a good tire. Uh, how about power on this uh, unit? What do you think? Most uh, super powerful being 10, one terrible. You know, you think it could have used a little more, a little less? I, I mean, for what I do, I think it's just, it's it's perfect for us. You know, um, you know, it's being that it was my first side by side. I've had, you know, almost nearly 100 horsepower four wheelers, but that was a four wheeler, you know. Yeah. But it, I mean, it'll go 70 mile an hour. How fast do I need to go? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, so, you know, that, that's plenty fine with me. Even yeah. though I think Lord buy me a new turbo. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where where would you rate that at, Jesse? I'll give that an eight. Well, All right. Well, All let's right. hope uh let's hope that you get a new turbo for your uh for your birthday. Yeah, we'll see that next time yeah. we're out on the yeah. trail. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I, I bet you don't. If I see a turbo me, it's probably because I got a new side by side. Yeah. <laughs> then you'll be able to get around them corners and steer with the skinny yeah how about uh how about that suspension how do you feel about that what do you rate that at oh that's 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 that's, that's a solid eight that it rides pretty good uh -huh. you know, i have it that, it that part's good you know it didn't bottom out um i'm still at medium uh -huh. um I'm sure, I'm sure i probably should check the springs so that's probably got a little of that uh spring you know sagging uh-huh um but as far as ride, you know, and we we rode flat ground because all we have here is flat ground. Uh -huh. uh, but out there, we never bottomed out. 
You know, we couldn't. We had some other issues, but we had no problem with, with the suspension. Yeah. And, w- and when you drive your, your side-by-side, would you say you're a, an easy driver? you to push it hard, or how do you feel your driving style is? Well, it depends on if lures in there. That's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> but, but most of the time, you know, we're, just, we're pretty easy going. Yeah. You know, uh, um, we like to stop and look, take pictures, and go on about our way, not be in a hurry. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But but we you know every, every once in a while it's okay to just you know I guess open it up and uh, I think we rode we ride three days yeah out there mm-hmm. yeah and, at Hatfield I don't know I don't know what we averaged but I mean it wasn't super fast but we we weren't super slow I guess either yeah, yeah. it wasn't bad it was at a medium pace at a medium pace yeah yeah so uh, I want to talk to y'all about uh, something that we uh, ragged on you pretty hard about let's talk about the turning radius in this unit huh Jesse. Turning radius, yeah. Well, let's see. When I got it home and I backed it out of the trailer, after I made the little sign up to, to, to send you guys, I uh, <laughs> turned around in the yard and I was like, I thought this thing would turn a little sharper than that. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, and then I didn't think nothing more of it. But when we when we got out there, I was pretty mad that first day. I was getting frustrated. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, uh, as you know, you know, I was having a hard time getting around the corners without uh, going around. <laughs> I had reverse turns, so I'd have to give it a solid eleven. So, <laughs> now I need a real, a real. I think he wants to knock one of the ones off of that eleven. Yeah. I've a, uh, it turns, so it can't, it can't, it can't give it a one, and, and yeah, it, being it's, a, I'd have to give it a five. Yeah, I mean it's. It, That's you know, fair. I mean, then again, it, it's a bigger unit too, so yeah. it does take a little more to turn. But uh, that thing was definitely whooping your ass all up and down, Hatfield McCoy, man. That was hysterical. <laughs> Tyler came well, across the radio. Well, Jesse's making another 10-point turn. <laughs> yeah, he does some shit. It, it, it's, uh, you know, at first I was thinking, well, it's, you know, it's, it's me because I, I was new to it with that, you know. And I was like, well, it's probably me. And then I was like, we, we, we were following uh, Fazio, and he, he kind of, like, whipped around. We were in, like, this little grassy area. Man, I, it was flat. I had to make a 10-point turn around the flat. <laughs> I was like, hey. and, then, and then the second day we were riding, the the, the folks had the had the uh, four-seater. Oh, from uh, Western Power Sports, yeah. And that stupid thing was whipping right in the corners. And I'm like, shit. I, can't <laughs> I know. <laughs> <But> I, was. <laughs> I know. He was so frustrated. Oh. I thought we were going to burn it. Oh, that was funny. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, it have been after that first day, it have been for sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, how, oh, go ahead. Go, uh, how about line of sight uh, and visibility? Do you think you see good, and, you know, out the over the hood when you're on obstacles or different terrain or left side, right side, all around you? Do you think you, you see pretty good line of sight? Uh, left side, right side's pretty good. Um, I can see over the hood fine, but Laura would be – a little bit more of a challenge, mm-hmm. especially when you go up the hill and then you're going to go down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm sure that's all of them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's probably not just the Honda. But, yeah. Uh, I, I think I, that's a crack on my height. No, I wouldn't crack on the height. But, uh, <laughs> you better but, call him down. You ain't going to get nothing for your birthday, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I already got it. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't a turbo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No turbo. I got a shift gate. Yeah. That's all I get. <laughs> uh, um, you know, it, it, it gets, I can see okay. So I, I, if you want me to uh, score it, I, for me personally, I would have to give it an eight okay. for that. Well, that's fair. Um, and uh, I didn't uh, – well, there were some other things too because I know you like – did you guys like the box that I bought? Oh, yeah, the box. Yeah, actually, we mm-hmm. talked to a couple guys uh, that bought boxes just like that. Um, I think one of them was on a one KRX. Was a, yeah, one couple, was yeah. the guy that we just talked to. He mm-hmm. bought a Husky box. Yours was from Tractor Supply, right? Yeah, I bought mine from Tractor Supply. Yep. Yeah. And that's like the most wow. ingenious thing because I think that box, what is it, like six, $700 for that it's freaking box? It's expensive, man. Yeah, it's like 600 bucks. for yeah. that box. Yeah, I was like, there's no way. That's yeah. a whole lot of air filters. Yeah, <laughs> <That's all. laughs> or, or a good handful. <laughs> I, uh, I had bought a box for the last Polaris four wheeler I had, and I think that thing was three hundred dollars. And I was surprised I paid that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's uh, what you did was absolutely genius. And yeah. uh, for you, those of you that are watching or listening, uh, taking either a tractor supply box, a Husky box, and uh, they sell them. And I mean, mm-hmm. I, what was yours, Jesse? Like seventy bucks. 
Uh, yeah, I think it was around seventy bucks. It was like seventy dollars, and the holes line up in the bed perfectly with the box. Yep. And it just it it looks good. It too. looks factory. Yeah, it looks really good. How about? Man, I'm, a, I'm what, sorry. What's that? Go ahead, Jesse. I was gonna say I mounted mine uh, when I put the box in, and I mounted it. Uh, I mounted it also in such a way that I could still get the air filter cover off. Mm. There you go. That's good thinking. Yeah, because yours That's was back towards thinking. the uh, the e the edge of the bed further. Yeah. Yes, it's like right in the back. It's a big door, you know. It's a pretty pretty mm. big door. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But you, I'm a, you, know, you think that that was air filter was like for a, a turbine jet or something? No that thing that is thing's freaking huge. Huge man. It is. I work on machines every day. We got things that have a lot more stuff going on than that, and they don't have half the air filter. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. How about the uh, cab noise and the heat in there? How would you rate that? Uh, I didn't notice any heat. Uh, noise is, uh, um, I don't want to say, I don't, you can't like talk normal. Uh, you, you have to raise your voice a little bit with mm -hmm. the, with the noise. And I'm sure if I put a windshield on, it'll be a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, I'd probably give that a seven and a half to eight. Okay. All right. And then how about the fit and finish? What do you think about that? How it all, you know, the body lines, how it all comes together, powder coating, the welds, uh, doors, everything, you know, just all your stuff that uh, you think should look good and uh, be a good finish to it. How's that? How would you score that? Um, everything fits good. They have uh, some, like, uh, on some of their plastics, they even have, like, vibration washers so don't rattle. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, they they went they went they, they didn't cheap out on it. They they did good. Uh, mm -hmm. The only the only thing that I've seen that uh, uh, kind of surprised me was that on I, I have the green model, mm -hmm. so it has silver underneath, so mm -hmm. it's uh, gray or silver. Yeah. Now I did see on the you know the bottom where you're rubbing you know, like surface rust coming through. Oh. Uh, yeah. After we just on the silver parts, mm -hmm. not on the black part, just on the silver parts. But it's not everything. It's just uh, kind of like where we, you know, rubbed it on something underneath, and yeah, or you know, who knows what hit it. But yeah, I did see that. I well, do like that of, color green. That green is yeah. nice. Well, the good oh, yeah. news. Good news is Jesse. Uh, once that thing rusts through and the frame ain't no good no more, at least you got a good solid tranny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could try to sell it more. I paid for. It. <laughs> oh man! So, how would you rate the fit and finish overall, Jesse? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll give it, a, I'll give it a good eight. It's, 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 it's it may be nothing, but uh, it's just, I'm like anybody else. I'm gonna really look it over when you spend that much money on something. Yeah, oh, no yeah, doubt about sure. it. As you should. <clears throat> yeah. You gave this unit an overall score of seventy five point five. Uh, puts it in the C category, which is about where everybody else is putting this unit. Right around that neighborhood. Right around now, and I mean, you know, it is Honda's first sports side by side. Yep. And it's uh, you know, uh, you you never know, you never know till you know. Mm -hmm. Isn't that yep. So yep. the next one could be perfect, and who know who knows? Yeah. I'm I'm sure it won't be our last one. No, so, definitely no, I, not. No, I highly doubt that. Yeah, no way. Yeah, you'll get you'll get another one some other time. I'm sure of that. That, that thing better be able to hug a tree on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing he's gonna oh, test. Man. He's gonna be in a parking lot. Like, measure this. How how far is this? Yeah. Yep. He'll, he'll be like, I want to drive it, sir. Yep. It's in the showroom. Yep. I don't give a damn. I want to drive it. <laughs> yeah, the get the tape measure out. Yep. <laughs> All right, All Jesse. right, Jesse. Well, thanks a lot, buddy. We appreciate your time, and uh, y'all take care and enjoy that ice cream, and we'll be seeing you next time with one of them Edwards pies. Hell yeah. That's it. Probably, yeah, I'm guessing that time of the year is coming along. So oh, yeah. Yep. I won't be too awful long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesse. Laura says, says no matter what, we're going to May. We're going to May. So. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So you guys take care, and thanks for having us. All, All right, right, Jesse. Thanks. See you, later, See you Laura. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right, bye. Jesse Robinson, ladies and gentlemen. And Laura. And Laura. his wife. And, and, and his wife. She threw her know, two cents in. I don't know what he had going on. But either his service was bad or he was trying to wolf down ice cream and denied it while we had I that. think his cat was swatting the phone around. There was something going on. I just pictured Jesse doing this. This is what I picture him doing. Sitting at the desk talking to us going like this. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
That's what, <laughs> that's I what I'm picturing. Like just, just taking his phone and just that swirling phone around. it around. Like, oh yeah, just hanging out with he the boys. Even, he even told me, call me on this phone. So I thought, well, this that's gotta be, be the, the one with the, the good service. Phone. Yeah, I mean, it, nothing but love for Jesse Robinson and Laura and maybe all the get kids a new phone for his birthday. He might get a new phone. He probably should. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this. Hey, I'm gonna throw a little plug in here. This iPhone 11 Pro. Oh, here we dude, go. Dude, this is the cat's meow. I know. I just got this thing not too long ago, and I mean it. Dude. And before you all start saying, "Oh, you paid," he didn't pay for that shit. No, he paid for that shit. Oh, I paid hard for yeah, that. Yeah, he paid yeah. for that, and that thing is bad to the bone. Yeah, yeah. Now Tyler didn't pay for his. No, I got the hand me down. <laughs> he but got yeah, this but it's is a, a ten. It's this an X. Is iPhone ten. This is the perk of working uh, for Fisher's Off Road. I finally got yeah my gift. I put in years and years, yeah. and I finally like most people get pens and shit. Like after so long, I got an iPhone ten. Yeah. So, well, you know what? It's a good phone. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It's definitely nothing wrong with it. It's not no iPhone eleven. Though, I'll tell you that. Well, it's. I mean, beggars can't. Be, do you know how many people are out there with a flip phone watching? I mean, this? I wasn't like begging for like, it. People be like, "Damn, dude, I still got a freaking <laughs> how the hell a are you watching it on a flip people, phone?" They're like, everybody's got razor side by sides. I got a razor phone. Well, there's someone out there. Razor with has a smartphone. It flips open. It's got a screen and shit on it, dude. It's pretty impressive. There's someone out there with a cricket, bro. Listen to there this. There probably is, or a burner. There probably and is. They're like, listen to these yeah. guys bitching about iPhone tens <laughs> and elevens. Dude, I the just iPhone, wish. The iPhone 11 is the real deal, though, guys. It is the real deal, and it takes amazing pictures, amazing video quality, and uh, it's just, it's a great phone. <laughs> it's a great phone. But anyhow, let's, uh, we'll get back to talking about Jesse and his side by side. Yeah. I mean, nothing but love for Jesse. They always show up with pies. Yeah, they do. Edwards pies all I the live time. by the, the quote, bring cake or pie. Yeah. Like, that's, they that's do. my thing. And, uh, you know, you can tell a lot about a person by what type of pie or cake they show up with. Absolutely. And, you know, they killed it. Yeah. They, they have, they yeah. always show up one point yep. with the most delicious pies. Yeah, so, so, I mean, it's cool. And Jesse, you know, he doesn't have a lot of miles on his machine. It's 300 miles. He's still kind of getting a feel for it, and he's not a real hard, aggressive driver. So, you know, his likes and dislikes are going to be different than, than exactly. other people, especially if you're on the West Coast, which some of these uh, guys that we're talking to are on the West Coast. So you're going to get a different – you're going to get a mix. Yeah, um, but what's crazy is his scoring is still about the same as everybody it, else. Yeah, even though he like, – You know one thing that I haven't heard anybody talk about yet? And I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to bring it up. I wanted them to bring it up. Mm -hmm. The hill start assist. What do they think yeah. about it? Yeah, I know. You know? I know. I mean, it's it's a cool feature, but... If you don't need it, you If don't, you don't... Like, yeah. I, I haven't heard anybody say, man, I, I use that hill start assist all the time. Yeah. It's one of the only units that I've ran into that has it, you know, because mm -hmm. there's not many units that have that out there. Yeah. And I just... It's just something I, I thought people would talk more about. And the funny thing is, is he experienced the same thing we did with the off wheel drive, fighting itself, fighting going itself, back and pulling forth. back and forth, yeah. And, but the other guys were like, no. Yeah. No, no problem. So I don't know. F for me, I mean, I just, I felt like I was fighting it. Yeah. I, I, I didn't enjoy and, the i4 wheel drive. And actually, I talked to a couple of Honda techs, and they said that's the number one thing w with the Pioneers yeah. uh, that they had the i4 wheel drive on. They said that was the number one thing people were complaining about was the i4 drive because it was fighting itself, and then well, your brake pads it. wear out. Yeah, and then they, they took it from the automotive side of things. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, that's it's a little difference between running it down 65 south and yeah, you know, and in the dunes. In the dunes, yeah. yeah. So, guys, we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next caller. All right, y'all. Next up, we have Fred Vaca. I guess that's how you say that, V-A-C-C-A. -C -C I'd assume that's how you pronounce his name. And he is 49 years old, 210 pounds, five foot nine from Mesa, Arizona. And he rides mainly Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and California. Uh, he owned this Talon R since November, but he had a Talon X for seven months. And uh, he had um, 1,000 miles on his X, and now this R, he has 400 miles on it. And he has owned Polaris's before this. Uh, Razor XP1 and uh, I guess a couple other ones but uh, it's interesting because this guy um, does quite a bit he's been racing ever since you know he's like five years old knows a lot about the sport and off-roading and kind of knows how things should feel so I really kind of picked Fred because I want to see what his thoughts are because he's had an X and an R. He's had both of them. Yeah. So a lot of people don't have that opportunity to mm -hmm. have both and drive both and feel how they are. So it'd be interesting to get his feedback and see what he has and to say about that. And also why he went from the X to the R. Yeah. I why mean, did why? he switch it up? Yeah. You know? Especially because the X probably wasn't cheap. And then 
boom, there you go. You're into the yard. I bet you he's going to get a turbo for his, too. I guarantee he's going to tell us that. Yeah. Especially um, being out in Arizona. Yeah, and, and just uh, uh, a little background on this fella. He was an Arizona State Trooper for 12 years, and he teaches law enforcement driving schools. So, so he ought to have a little something in his background as far as, like, driving and mm-hmm. knowing how to drive. Yep. And, um Definitely got the, the law enforcement uh, side in his pocket. So who knows what this guy has seen and done. We're about to find out. Yep. Let's go ahead and let's give uh, old Fred a call. Here. Get him on the phone here. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Oh. Mm. Sorry. Used to. <laughs> Hello? Fred. Yeah. Hey, it's Brian and Tyler. How you doing, buddy? Hey, guys. What's going on? What's happening, Fred? How you <laughs> doing, much. man? Not I, much. I got your message. We were on the inter, uh, interviewing uh, the previous caller, and I got your message. You're like, oh, man, I'm at the store. I'll be home soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was out buying my Doom Pass. Okay. Oh, all right. You're going to Glamis? Yeah, head to the Glamis tomorrow. Oh, sweet. Good Heading deal. Yeah. Riding. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk to you about your talent, actually talons, because you've had an X and an R, Mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see why you traded up the X for the R, and we'll kind of get a feel for all this here as we go. Right on. Yeah, I've had a few people ask me as to why I traded and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So what what made you go with the talons in the first place, because you were a Polaris owner previously? Yes, I had a Polaris uh, XP1000 right demand. It, It was an 18 had uh, about 500 miles on it and i had been riding since i was um four or five years old Mm -hmm. started on honda three wheelers and kind of worked my way up through so the polaris was kind of a transition phase from uh, the jeeping world where we did a lot of rock crawling and that sort of Mm -hmm. thing and uh so it was the popular machine out there everybody had it it seemed like you know let's let's give it a try oh yeah the bandwagon Uh, yeah (laughs) yep got on the bandwagon and you know after we took it up to the alpine loop in colorado and i did the three or four hundred miles over the weekend Mm -hmm. i'm like you know i'm just not really impressed with this polaris (laughs) there's there's some things i just don't like yeah um so i started looking at some other options and i had a deposit on a yxz uh, SS, mm-hmm. um, SC version. And just as I was about ready to score the deal mm-hmm. is when I heard that, uh, Honda had released some, some photos of their new talent that it was coming. And when I looked at see what was about it, they talked about the transmission that it was going to have an automatic and a manual mode. Mm-hmm. And that to me was a huge appeal. So I went ahead and uh, pulled that deposit off that Yamaha. Mm-hmm. And I got on a pre-order list for the for the talent. I said, you know what? I've always been a Honda guy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and and put money down on this. Uh, and I had ordered a talent R off the get go. Yeah. So that's kind of how I transitioned from the Polaris to the talent. Mm-hmm. So the R wasn't going to be in in time. So you bought the X, or you just well, here's the deal. I I went ahead. Uh, we had a trip booked to Sand Hollow, which is about a seven hour ride. And my dealer said that, um, hey, I don't know when the when the machines are coming in because there's some delays and and whatnot. Um, so as we got close to the trip, and this is about a year ago, he's like, I don't think I, I can get you the R before your trip. And, it, you know, it's all pre, pre-planned, the vacation and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, he says, he calls me up oh, a week or two before and says, hey, I got a blue blue x in you can have it you can have it today if you want it nobody's got the deposit on it talked to the wife i said you know what hey we need this trip otherwise we're going to be like up the creek so I, i'm like yeah i'll take it i'll just cut my losses i'll go with the x and we'll just deal with it you know from there um so i went ahead and, and i bought the x and and we took it to sand hollow and that was basically the break and ride mm-hmm uh on the x the um uh out at sand hollow that's where we were whenever we actually tested the honda talent yeah that was out in utah yeah yep yeah yeah so, so what you, so that was a good that was a good trip up there so you you had enough time to put a thousand seat miles on this x 
And then, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, you know what made what was the main thing that made you transition from that X to that R? Um, so riding with a couple of buddies, we created a Facebook group here, and um, we started getting together and doing some group rides. And everybody else had the R, and I had the X. I was the only guy with an X. <laughs> oh, that's that's <laughs> demasculating. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> right. So, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I always wanted the R, but hey, it is what it is. I got the X. Uh, I've done some things to it. I did the shock therapy setup. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a bunch of accessories on it. And we all went right. And during one of our rides, out in the southwest, we've got a lot of wide open riding that we can do. And then Mm -hmm. there's some tight stuff. So there was a point in time that we hit the trail that I became the leader and we were in this real tight, rocky section and I just smoked these guys in the arse. Mm-hmm. They couldn't keep up for nothing. So when it was, things got flipped around and we kind of hit the old wide open trails, they're like, bye-bye. Yeah. Because all I saw was this vapor trail of dust <laughs> and there was no keeping up with them. Yeah. They were gone like there was no tomorrow. Yeah. So the next ride, um, I get with one of my other guys and he's like, Hey, we just retweaked cause we all had shock therapy. Yeah. He goes, I just, just retweaked mine. You want to take it for a ride with me? And I'm like, yeah, I'll sit, you know, shotgun with you and you know, let's go through the whoops and show me what this thing can do. And that yeah, boy, that was an eye opener. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. So we're getting ready to load up on the trailers. He's like, you want to take it for a ride? You know, by yourself, I'm like, no, dude, I, I know that's a bad decision. I really shouldn't do this. <laughs> that's the last thing you want to do. <laughs> He's like, here's the keys. I'm like, dude, I know what this is going to do. Yeah. So he so said, I jump in his machine. I take it for a ride. The next day, I'm at the Honda dealer. Uh, what can you do me on an R? <laughs> yeah. So it was just, what, the suspension, how it rides, how it sucks up the bumps? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so... When you get into a higher speed, that's where that R really shines. Yeah, exactly. We're, we definitely yeah. agree with you. 100% yeah, I agree with you 100% there. on that. Yeah. I felt like, and it, I would say about 30 miles an hour is about that pivot point where it switches. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we felt like the X, it felt like uh, the train we were in there, we felt like it could get away from us. It felt like the rear end wanted to come around. Like it was, mm-hmm. it was on that, you were kind of on the edge. If you don't know how to drive, that thing would whip your ass. Yeah. You could put oh, yourself absolutely. in trouble quick. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And, you, it, and then we got in the R, and heck, Tyler was running that thing across them whoops I was 60 doing, some mile an hour. I think I was doing like 67 across yeah. a bunch of, I mean, whoops. Like we were, we were deep, hitting it. Deep, rutted whoops. Right, and, right. It'll, it'll eat a man up. <laughs> and it just. It yeah. sucked it right up. It if that had been the X, we'd right. have been on our lid. Oh, yeah. We definitely would have been. I mean, and just to give you an idea, they were. They were like, yeah, I think three quarters of a mile away or something like that, and they were taking pictures as we were as we were coming across. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I had this thing absolutely pinned. I was not lifting at all. Yeah. And right, right. And I would have lifted had I felt like I was gonna, you know, do it if I was something was gonna Out go of control, wrong. Yeah. And man, it just I was a hundred percent impressed with the way that that thing handled yeah. in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. I think just being a little bit wider and a little bit longer gives it that better stability. Um, you know, especially in the desert where you can really open it up. Yeah. It was a game changer. Well, yeah. you know that th- we know that there's a huge difference between the shock setup and how wide it is and how long it is and all that other stuff between the X and the R. Uh, did yeah. you notice a difference in performance from the X to the R? What kind of performance? I mean, as far as like engine wise, did it still feel identical, or did you notice that the unit Power. was a little bit heavier? Yeah. What was the biggest difference between the X and the R, other than the way that uh, handling and suspension? Was there any lag in performance or anything like that? Uh, engine power really felt about the same. The mm. X maybe felt like it was a touch faster. Um, What's a little lighter? Really? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit lighter. But I didn't really notice any major difference. Um, I could notice a, a significant difference in the stability, especially when you get into some off camber stuff. That wider footprint is yeah. going to hold it better. You know, if you're rock climbing or you're getting on some side hills, mm. it, it's going to hold it better versus the X is going to get a little tippy on you. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that I four wheel drive? I love it. Do you? It works out well yeah. for you? great i have no issues with it 
It, right. it felt to me like it was trying to fight itself when we were in Sand Hollow in the sand, uh, but we were also running those stock tires at 18 pounds. Yeah, we were air running pressure. stock Maxxis tires. So and... I don't know if that wow, had something. Wow, at 18 pounds? Oh, yeah, they wouldn't let us. They, they, see, what, what happens yeah. is when you go on an intro, you're with the manufacturers, and when you drive these, they have to be according to specs. So just right, like right. we just did to KRX uh, in California, and I knew if I could let some air out of those tires that that thing was going to climb a lot better it just seemed like it was slipping more than gripping and they said yeah. we can't let any air out of the tires because that's what it's rated at and that's what it's rated mm -hmm. to haul the load mm -hmm. so the manufacturers are real careful about that so i don't know why they had that much air it's, it's all them. it's you know there's a lot of people that show up to intros and they've never been outside of the office so yeah. it's like yeah, whatever right, you try right. to yeah, tell you them guys, you need to come out yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's and they're like well insurance yeah. states that we need to have what it says on the side of the door panel here it's hey man like, that's all right because yeah. they said you know we want to see something so tyler yep. and i went around this one dune <laughs> yeah. it was it was the end of the day last shot well it turned out to be the last shot they shut we, it down after we, we did jumped it. this dune and blew the tire right off the, they, the wheel they kept telling they kept telling us they're like all right we want to see sand flying and all this stuff and yeah. i was like halfway through the day and i was like you know what bro just pin it just pin it and he was driving we came up to the top of this dune and i'm like pin go 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 i'm screaming out even shit. <laughs> we launched it off the top of this dude and whenever we landed blew the tires off the wheels and this dude freaked out he blew his i oh, mean wow. he blew a gas he was like that's it shut it down we're done we're done everybody head back to camp i know i rolled up with and the, the guys like you know considered like a chase truck you know yeah. they had tires and everything in a pioneer yeah and uh they were not happy yeah they I definitely like, dude you guys didn't do shit all day yeah like, this is a chase truck this yeah, is your job this is what you're what supposed you do. to do yeah right but and, yeah uh, they weren't happy but yeah i, I just felt like the yeah that's way too much air pressure us. yeah it just felt like it was fighting us so i don't know if it was the conditions uh is the way the the car the side by side was set up uh i don't know well i ran uh i think 10 pounds of uh, air pressure on those stock tires which are junk yeah absolute oh, junk for that machine those yeah. things are and, garbage yeah, terrible yeah yeah that's the f one of the first upgrades you need to do is i got 32s on my r now and it's a world of difference okay mm -hmm. all right yeah do, How, you yeah do you feel the powers robbed with the 32s on there not at all really not at all that's cool How, you can only go so wide because of, what is that the trailing arm that comes back i felt like that stuck out a little bit there well, if you use different wheels Oh yeah, you could run a different offset too. Yeah, yeah, I'm running factory offsets, so I got a six one and a four three in the rear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I'm still at sixty eight, sixty nine inches wide. It's a slightly wider because it's a larger tire. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you are you running a sand tire? Are you running like an all terrain or? No, an all terrain tire. I put on the Maxxis Liberties, um, which is a good desert all all terrain tire out here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And uh Fred, would you consider yourself to uh be a hard rider, like aggressive? Do you like really make your equipment earn its keep or <laughs> are you kinda <laughs> kinda like babying it? You know, I'm a little bit of everything. Yeah. So oh, it kinda boy. depends on, on what day of the week it is. And if um, the wife's riding with you? Yeah. <laughs> if the wife is riding and she's taking pictures, you know, so we'll do that Sunday, you know, casual ride. Mm-hmm. But then there's times it's it's all out, all or nothing. Um, a lot of times I'll be the back guy because I have the radios, and the front guy will also, you mm -hmm. know, have the radios. Mm -hmm. And you know, I play a game of chase. You know, and I, I'm that's kind of you know that's what I do for a living. I chase cars. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yep. Yep. yeah, I'm used to chasing people down, and you know, I want to see how far they can get out, and if I can reel them in. Yeah. Yep. And so so it's kind of a game. It's fun. It's like cat and mouse. Yeah, it is exactly. Yeah, that's cool. That's um, good. Have you, between the X and the R, have you had any issues with either one of those units? Um, the only thing I had an issue on was two issues on the X. Um, the radiator, originally, they wired it backwards, which was in a mm -hmm. factory fan, issue. Yeah. Which, yeah, so the fan thing. So that was a quick fix. And my front rear axle started to just to seep a little bit of oil. Um about maybe two or three hundred miles into owning it. And what what was that on the X? That was on the X. Okay. But on the R, I have not had any issues, um, or either one of those issues. Now, how was uh, 
how was Honda working with dealing with uh, getting it covered under warranty like that axle issue and all the other stuff? They pretty easy to work with. Yeah, the fan issue I brought it right in. He took care of it, not a problem. Uh, the axle issue, I talked to the owner who's the the dealer, and he said, "I want you to wipe it clean. Let's watch it. Let's see if it's oozing or, or just seeping." And he said, "You know, it's not a problem to bring it in for warranty, but let's just kind of monitor it." And I never had it fixed. It never seemed to develop into a major leak. Okay. Hmm. So, wild. but he was more than willing to fix it under warranty, no issues. Okay, yeah. good deal. Did yeah, you, yeah. Did you put any accessories on either one of yours, or what do you have on your own? <laughs> well, that's an understatement. Oh wow! <laughs> what didn't you put on? It probably be easier to. That that's probably the better question. I haven't done the turbo. <laughs> I haven't done a cage, but yeah. Holy crap! I, yeah, I've done a lot of other stuff. Um, so I got the thirty twos. I got bead locks on it. I have a J Sport front bumper, which is the same as a King of Hammer front bumper on it. Mm -hmm. I'm running a dual battery setup, rugged radio, radio system and intercom, Magellan TRX7, um, GPS. I have the SMB particle separator mm. because the air filter system on that stinks. Yep, yep, we've heard that. Yeah. Um, I got the harnesses, three, three inch harnesses on it. A light bar, Rigid Industries. So, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different stuff on it. Yeah. Did you get the lower sections for the doors? I just got those yesterday from J Sport. No okay. brand new item that they just offered. Going to get them on for uh, Glamis? Yeah, going to get them on tonight. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. Good, Good deal. So, uh, um, how's the storage on your unit? Did you get the storage box too? or uh... No, no storage box. The only thing I have in the back is uh, you got to have a cooler, especially out here in Arizona, because you got to have some cold beverages. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah. the but storage on a hole, it's limited. Yeah. And you don't have really a lot of stuff or a lot of room. Yeah. No, it's very misleading too. The glove box looks a lot bigger than what it actually yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I keep a small air compressor in there. How small? Um, just a little portable one that you could plug it in. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there, there's really – storage is, is limited. And then yeah. passenger comfort for mm -hmm. this uh, unit, for these units. Uh, my wife loves it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely loves it. Uh, the first thing she noticed right off the bat was compared to the Polaris, she goes, there's no cab heat. Mm, okay. And that Polaris, it would melt you, especially in the summer out here. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Oh, it man. was so hot. Yeah. 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 It, it was undrivable. You couldn't ride it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not fun for anybody. Yeah. No. I, I do no. love the, the passenger seat in the, uh, in the Talon. I think it's one of the most comfortable. It's a good setup. I think it's one of the best setups for a passenger seat in the side by side market today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, coming off the factory line, it's got comfortable seats. It's it's got a decent seating position in it. So, uh, yeah, it's fairly comfortable. Yeah. So that sounds good. So talking about that, we're gonna have you score some stuff. Yeah, we're gonna right go. On. We're gonna go into. I'm sure you've seen the the show to podcast before. Yeah. We uh we go Definitely. down through a list one through ten. Just looking for a fair review. Don't want tens all the way down. Don't want ones yep. all the way down. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna start off with interior comfort. I want you to give me a rating on that and why. Um, interior comfort for the most part. I think my only dislikes is I think coming from the factory, they really should offer harnesses, mm -hmm. uh, especially these high performance machines. Uh, I know it's set up for you, you got the, the holes in the seats, mm -hmm. but that really should be something that they should, uh, come in from the factory. Yeah. And the other issue I have is the dash mm -hmm. that center dash and mm -hmm. the Amber glow to it. You get a little uh, bit yeah. of dust on it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's worthless. It. Com yeah. It's yep. completely worthless. Um, they really re need to redesign it. Yeah. How about the cup so, holder replacement? Does that bother you? No, not at all. It's fine. So, so if you have bottles in there, it doesn't hit your arm or you don't feel it's hard to get access to? No, not at all. I keep a uh, hydro flask in, in there. Uh, help keep the you know your, your beverage cold or your water cold. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it fits right in there. So overall, I would probably say that's – I'd give them an eight. They, they need to improve it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And then uh, reliability, um, as far as the R, your, how's your reliability on that? You haven't had any issues? How would you rate that? You know, Honda has got a reputation of having some quality stuff, and here's where I would probably give it a solid 10. 
Uh, I know there's been a few issues with some other people around the country, but as a whole, it, it's really it's a solid machine. Mm-hmm. I bought this machine based on the transmission, yeah. and that's what you're buying. Mm-hmm. And they hit a home run on it. It's absolutely spot on. It's great. Um, so as far as that fear of breaking a belt and, and you know, babying it, you have to break in your belt. No, nah, I get in the machine, warm it up a little bit, and if foot goes to the floor, I'm on it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So you want to give out a ten? Yeah, give it a ten. You know, and to be honest with you, anything, anytime anybody talks about Honda, if it, the first word that comes to mind is reliability. Reliability. Every, every time doesn't matter. We could be talking about a rancher from the '70s. Yeah, <laughs> and it's still right? running. And it's still running today. They're like, yeah, I fill the gas tank up with Nutella every weekend. An '84 Honda, exactly. 250. <laughs> yeah. D, uh-huh. you know, I mean, it's it's going to be running forever. Yeah. So uh, exactly. And I just wanted to clarify real quick for you, Fred, that um, whenever we do this rating, this is going to be for the R and not for the X. Some right of the, on. some yep. of the things like the interior comfort, you can combine them. But uh, as far as ratings go, we're going to go ahead and stick with just uh, your just experience the R, with yeah. the R right now. Yep. Yep. Okay, you got it. So, Our X callers will be next week. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll see what they have to say. <laughs> yeah. Much the right same as you did. So as far as maintenance goes, ease of maintenance, working on this unit, changing oil, anything like that, where would you rate that at and why? Well, I did the first service on the X by myself uh, with the exception of changer, adjusting the valves. And it seemed pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Everything was pretty easy to get to. Um, no major issues. With the R, I brought it to the dealer. They checked the valves. Everything was in spec. Um, just for peace of mind, I wanted to make sure that this thing you know, was up and running. Um, but as far as accessibility, it's fairly good. I don't really have any issues with it. I'd give it a solid eight. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. And uh, did you have your, uh, the last guy we talked to, he said he had to get the shifter linkage adjusted um, because it actually damaged his transmission because I guess it was stretched and he didn't have it adjusted at a certain mile. What was it, 100 and... I don't know what he said. I couldn't... It was I think something. you're only supposed to check it at 100. I think you're yeah. supposed you're to check it or adjust yeah. it or something. He said he never got it adjusted and ended up messing up his sub-transmission. Broke, yeah, yeah, broke a couple dogs off. <laughs> yeah, if if you don't have on your digital display, make sure that it's in the proper gear before you hit that skinny pedal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you might break some dogs off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I haven't adjusted mine at this point and i also have the ca industry uh shift gate in it so it Mm -hmm. makes shifting a whole lot easier Mm -hmm. okay um but i'm conscious of before i make a shift hey let me stop this machine let me put it in gear let me make check my indicator yep it's good Mm -hmm. then you get on it and go okay yeah Yeah. now how about how about the handling what do you what do you think about that uh how would you rate that and why um on the R, high speed handling coming out of the box, I would probably put it seven and a half or an eight. Uh, it definitely needs a little bit of help in the suspension department. Yeah, that's I mean, one of our I'm sure we're going to talk too. about that here soon. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, uh, power coming out of the hole, is there any type of lag? Uh, you think it could be more, maybe less? What do you think about the power scale, one to 10, and why? For me, the power is really good coming out of the hole um, with the ability of being able to power shift down if you want um, or setting yourself up into coming into the, to the curves, you know, by, by changing the gears that certainly helps um, in your power curve that you want to be in Uh, off the line. It seems to put that power right to the ground where you don't have that that belt or the clutch slipping of like some of the other units that I've ridden before, but it's not a turbo. So, Mm -hmm. you know, there's always a little room for improvement. Mm -hmm. I would probably give it an eight, eight and a half, you know, on the, on the power scale. Yeah. Okay. Are you planning on getting a turbo? Not a six thousand dollars, no sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be a hard sell to the wife. There's not a chance someone yeah. would pay six thousand. No, I just yeah, uh, yeah. But for what you get for six thousand dollars, no, it's uh, I'll keep what I have. It's yeah. definitely I, uh, that's a that's a but, bit of a price increase on that. But I have poor man's turbo. You know what poor man's turbo is? What's that? The, 
that's that sport mode button. Oh. <laughs> so I keep it normally in the normal mode. Yeah. That's how I, I, I program the computer because mm-hmm. it learns how you, how you drive, your yeah. shift patterns and stuff like that. But if I want to give it a little bit more, I throw it in sport. And it's like, hey, it's poor man's turbo. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> then you really feel like you're kicking ass, huh? Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, we're going to talk about what you were just talking about is uh, the suspension. How's the suspension set up on this uh, unit? It's rough. Yeah. Um, it, it, it needs help. It really it needs help. Um, I, I was I put some thought into it because, you know, I listened to your podcast before and mm-hmm. uh, wanted to kind of have an idea as what mm-hmm. we're talking about. You know, I had a, I had a rating for an X, I had a rating for an R, and then I have a rating for hey, the after. You know, what can we do to improve it? Mm-hmm. Um, so coming out of the box, after a couple hours of riding, it, it's it's sore. It really it wears you out. It's tiring. It's stiff. Mm-hmm. Um, these things are known to have a lack of nitrogen. You know, from the Fox shocks. Yeah. Um, so on the R, I'd give it a six. Okay. It, it really needs help. Since then, I got with Weller Racing. Um, they did their complete rebuild, so they they did the um, Schrader valves. They re they did the uh, revalving of the shocks, new springs. I put the iBox sway bar on it, and their heavy duty tie rod kit. Mm-hmm. And I would give it an eleven. It is okay. night and day difference. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. Now, do you notice any driveline chatter, or have you noticed any from beginning to now, or no. Okay. No difference in no. two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? With the no. Dri- no? Okay. No, but I pretty much run 85 90% in two-wheel drive. The only time I throw it into four is if I see a hill climb and go, uh-oh, that's going to need four-wheel drive. Mm-hmm. How would you run out, but, out in Sand Hollow? Were you running mostly uh, two-wheel drive? Two-wheel. Yeah? Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I was just curious how, what you were running out there. He had me yeah, going there for a second. Drive. He said, I run pretty much 85, 90. I was told you meant miles an hour. I was, I was damn, like, damn, he yeah. doesn't need a turbo. Yeah. His, <laughs> his freaking R is the fastest one I've ever heard of. I was like, yeah. damn, this guy's running He got it all bored 90. out. But yeah. then he said percent. Yeah. I was like, woo. Yeah. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about something that uh, we, uh, I mean, the last person agrees with us, and we definitely think it needs a little bit of work. But the turning radius on this unit, what do you think? Granted, you were out in the dunes. Yeah, he has a lot of dune. Area. You got a lot of dune area, but what do you think about the turning radius? Um, yeah, especially coming from an X. An mm-hmm. X was a ten. I mean, it was spot on. That thing mm-hmm. turned on a dime and mm-hmm. would give you nine cents back. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, sounds like G-Man. He That's does. Who he reminds That's me who he reminds I swear you. it's his brother. I, it has to be. They got to be related. Did you write all this shit down before we called you? Yeah, I mean, he's We're studied. about to go I off script. Notes. He's, I took a few notes. He's studied, man. He's like... <laughs> he studied. We got to switch up all the questions that just just come Wait, way hey, all, this, out of left field. This is a, right? uh, an Arizona State Trooper uh, that he studied. He Like he was going to court. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be prepared, man. You never know. <laughs> hey, you know what? We love it. We do. Yeah. So the cool turning beans. radius. So turning radius, yeah. Obviously, skinny pedal is going to help you. Yeah. Um, the CA industry shift gate is going to help, you know, those – instead of making a 300-point turn, you can knock it down to a three-point turn. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, tractor trailer just whipped right around yeah. you like nothing. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's not. It's not great. Um, I, I, I'd give it a seven point five. Yep. It's yeah. not horrible, but it's not great. We were with a friend of ours at Hatfield McCoy Trails. Actually, he's going to be doing. He's going to be doing one of the the, the interviews, mm-hmm. and and there was some. I mean, there's some pretty crazy switchbacks at Hatfield McCoy. I mean, it is tight. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Everyone, he's doing like a three, four point turn. I think he got one of them finally. He in was a two so point pissed. turn. I was he really was, proud of him. He was ready to burn it, and it's the first time he drove it. Yeah, I mean, he had zero miles on it before that. We we went out riding that day. So yeah, oh, he wow. was fired up. Yeah, but East Coast tight woods trail riding it. It didn't. Uh, we haven't been impressed with what we've seen so far. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, and that's where the X is going to shine. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's that's what we want to find out next week uh, when we talk to the X guys and see what they have to say because i don't think sure. that's as bad for i sure. wish i wish that they could make the x as stable as the r without adding all the inches to it yeah. you know what i mean yeah if yeah, there was yeah. a way i, I don't know especially if, for an east coast machine that's what i mean woods. it's just yeah. 
for the X, I just I wasn't a big fan of how it handled and performed. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I would agree with you. Yeah. Now, how about uh, the cab noise and heat there, Fred? I'm sure you already took notes on this. So, what do you what are you thinking? <laughs> Why you got mess with him? He's like, let me flip through it. They jumped he ahead. Said, Hold on, they yeah. messed it up on me. We went from this to this. Yeah. Cab noise. Um, it's probably one of the quieter machines that I've ridden in. Uh, my wife and I, we can have a conversation um, while we're driving. We're in the Polaris. It was like, what'd you say? I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, do you, um, do you, um, do you wear helmets with the, uh, rugged radio set up in them with the, the ear no. pieces of mics? Do you run like a headset or just a the heads? Yeah. The headsets. Okay. All right. Cause yeah, we have some of those, but I haven't tried them. Mm-hmm. So how would yeah. you, how would you rate that as far as the, the cab noise and the heat? Prior to the headsets, I mean, it was really comfortable. We could, I could go down the road, um, and we can hold the conversation because I'm street legal, so I can just buzz down any of these highways, your roads. Oh, that's cool. And yeah, and it was great. Um, it's even better with the headsets. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. As far as cab heat, I would say that's literally non-existent relative some other to some other machines that I've been in. Um, I'm really pleased with the cab heat um as an overall so i'll give it a solid nine combined i mean there's always a little room for improvement okay yeah, very All true right. it's very true and before tyler asked you this last question let me ask you real quick while we're on this uh your thoughts yeah. on the rugged radio setup using the headsets how much does that change your driving experience because i know we use them but i just like to see what other people think about the experience um overall it's been really good you know it's nice to be able to, to have you know some music playing in the background and mm-hmm. then you're able to talk to each other or talk to another car. Mm-hmm. We did run into a few difficulties uh, with some other cars that were having some c- communication issues or something wasn't plugged in just right. Yep, and yep. you know, it, it would they get cut wet. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get right. Um, I cross threaded my antenna on the last one. So Ooh. it wasn't getting a good, a good contact. And it's like, I can't hear anybody. What's going on. Yeah. That sucks. Um, but you know it was a quick fix it, it didn't ruin any threads so i was able to readjust it and, and we were back on our trail and, and and rolling with it man you were lucky uh, to find that yeah yeah you know so i was kind of like we were just poking around trying to figure out what's going on with it especially are you running like the 50 watt or 60 watt yeah it's a 60 watt radio okay yeah i have that same thing yeah okay all right tyler so it's actually going to be two questions he jumped ahead i'm sure you know that if you were looking at your notepad there um, yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going to go back to line of sight and visibility coming in at 5.9. Yeah, I, I skipped that one because he was getting cocky there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> we got to keep you on your toes, man. Got to yeah. keep you on your toes. Yeah, definitely. L- line of sight and visibility. Looking out over over the side doors behind you, what do you think? Where would you rate that at? I'd give it in um, somewhere between 8 and a 9. Let's call it an 8.5. Sounds good. Um, I don't know where they can improve it coming off the factory. Um I have mirrors on it. I got the seismic mirrors, you know, that helps with your visibility in the rear. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of peeking over, looking at your front tire, if you're climbing some obstacles. Yeah. And it's not too bad. Um, it's not perfect. When you sit in a YXE, I felt as though the, the your, your light, sign of, sight lines were much better because of that slope that it offers yeah mm-hmm. it does um, it does have a nice slope to it the one thing i will say yeah. about the yxz just while we're talking about it uh you don't realize how wide the unit is because it's like it's almost like an optical illusion and the way that the tie rods are made they're Cheesy. like they are like butter <laughs> i'm talking if you hold up a, a a talon tie rod or a can-am tie rod it's like holding up a chopstick next to a toothpick i've yeah. bent i've bent more tie rods and yamahas and so as dad did anything else oh, yeah. it's yeah. like yeah and well that's why i put the heavy duty weller tie rods on it i mean these yeah. things are like three times the size of the stock ones yeah the yxz you didn't like the seat belt ah uh, no i hated that seat belt design it like it your, needs a harness yeah it hit your collarbone right there and mm-hmm. just that it, it and the way it sits it, it almost comes up it like starts at your collarbone and goes up underneath your ear because it's at such of a, a hard angle Pitch, yeah 
And right. then they have that there, you know, they were talking about the, how you can adjust the seat belt. If you don't like it up mm-hmm. high, you can drop it down low. If you drop it down low, then you sit in the seat almost like you do in the X3 where it leans you back real far. And then it's just on your collarbone and on your neck and it really chews you up. And yeah. I think that one should definitely be offered with harnesses whenever you get it. Mm-hmm. You know, honestly, all these machines that have harnesses on them, they're yeah. so much more comfortable. Yeah. Yep. Especially when you're going through the bumps and then, you know, that normal seatbelt will give and then it locks in yeah. and it just it just beats you up. Oh, yeah. I will say that Honda, the, the Talon, their seatbelt was one of the more comfortable ones. It had more give. It had more. It was more of a elasticity. Like it yeah. was, right, right. I'd agree. It, it had a couple inches that you could go without just locking, locking up, up and hitting yeah. that. Yeah. Some, yeah. some yeah, units definitely. are really bad for that. Yeah. The last question that we're going to hit you with here is fit and finish, look, craftsmanship, the welds on the unit, powder coat, everything holding up. What do you think overall of this, and where would you rate that? So the only issue that I had on these machines on the the fit and finish was the doors rattling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, They do offer that little rubber, um, it's like a stopper that will twist in or twist out to help adjust it. Yeah. And... I don't know. Maybe my my machine was slightly off a little bit, but I would unscrew it and it just, it doesn't seem like it would go far enough. So I improvised. I went to the hardware store and I bought some little rubber stoppers uh, for like a leg on a chair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I pressed it right in there like a, like a wedge. And now when my door shut, it's just solid. Um, absolutely zero rattling, and it cost me like a buck fifty for these little door stoppers. Okay, makes you wonder why Honda um, didn't do that in the first place. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think you know, as it's coming off the line, you know, everything is not exactly the same, mm-hmm. and that gap tolerance was just it, the idea was good. It just it wasn't perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, the so you idea, hear a lot the, of new owners say, "Yeah, it's rattling, it's rattling, it's the doors." The idea is good on paper a lot of times, but you got to really test it and try it out and see if because over time you're gonna you know you're gonna find out just like you know guys like you. Yeah, you buy it, yeah. you drive it, and you realize what's wrong with it. And you know, with some R and D, you know, they could probably get ahead of that and be like, "Okay, let's fix the doors because yeah. that's something you're paying." Right. By the way, how much did you pay uh, out the door for this machine for the R? Well, you traded um, in your X, so that's yeah. So the X, I paid full price, which was the what twenty thousand. Yeah, on it, and then I got the R. He had it discounted. I think I got it for seventeen five. Mm. Um, on you know MSRP, you know he knocked it down, and then we did the trade thing. But you know, mm-hmm. as far as the price of the R was seventeen five. Okay. okay. And and that's what really kind of made it appealing that I can justify let's let's just switch units yeah you know and, and cut our losses and I you had three grand worth really... of fun yeah oh yeah hell Asse- yeah essentially <laughs> essentially that's three dollars a mile you put on you know what I mean right. <laughs> hey man right. it's like a rental car <laughs> exactly it's all right yep it's all right yeah, hey you know and he it. sold it the day I dropped it off and I picked up the R he sold it that afternoon. Well, he probably sold that same one four times now because everybody's coming back. Yeah, and getting the R. Getting the R. <laughs> yeah. Let's. Uh, what was the What was the overall score you wanted to give that fit and finish? By the way, on that fit and finish, um, I would give it a nine. Okay. Yeah, there's there. You know, it, there's always room for improvement. Mm-hmm. And you know what's funny is um, the last gentleman that we interviewed, uh, his was eighteen five, uh, and yours was seventeen five. You know, so it's kind of interesting. The, and and he got his when it first came out. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's definitely not bad. And you he get, didn't want to pay full price for it. He's like, I'm not going to fall for that. And he no. did anyhow. It's <laughs> yeah, amazing yeah. Well, how you uh, adjust your compromising ability whenever you know you want to mm-hmm. go ride. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the dealer, he was he was really good to me because you know obviously I bought the first one from him, so he's already made money once. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. You know, and it, I I got a nineteen left over. You know, so the the twenties were starting to roll in. He's like, I can get you a deal in a nineteen. You know, if you want it. And I'm like, damn right, I'll take a nineteen. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Wait, what do you wrap up? You with gave here? this unit an overall score of eighty two, which puts okay. it in the B category. Nice. It's still, uh, you know what? We appreciate fair reviews. We mm-hmm. don't want, like we said, well, the whole goal of this is not to get everybody to say, "Oh man, this unit is the greatest thing ever." We understand yeah. that you know a lot of people spend a lot of money on this, and uh, we want to see areas that that they can be improved upon. You know what I mean? Because yeah, every year it's you know like Can Am, Polaris, they take stuff and they constantly come out and they try and do it better next year next year and Mm -hmm. for you know honda's first sport side by side you know they they have some areas they need to work on 
uh, right. to have an excellent right. machine. Yeah, and there's no right. perfect machine. Everybody's got a little work to do somewhere. Mm-hmm. Very true. Exactly. You just basically. And I think the talent's got a bunch of potential. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. But it but it needs a little help. You know, mm-hmm. coming out of the box. Yep. 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 It's agree. like it's like uh, Dad said. I think it was on the other night on live talk. He said the mo- the the perfect machine is the one that gets you back. Doesn't matter. You what don't it have is, to walk as long exactly. as you don't have to walk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can sit around and you know bash each other in about oh you drive this and you drive that yep. and you suck and you know what at the end of the day if I ain't walking I'm I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, Fred. I think that about wraps it up, buddy. I appreciate you taking time to talk to us. You bet, guys. I appreciate it. And if you ever come out this way, look us up. You know, Honda Town in Southwest. Okay. You know, on Facebook. Is that your you Facebook? Know, glad group? to try. Right. Yeah, yeah. We'll try to set you up for a ride. And okay. You know, if you want to try out, we got a couple machines out here running shock therapy. A couple running Weller Racing. Okay. Um, and really see what the difference is when you start to change them. What the potential is. Um, another guy uh, is getting his turbo put on. I think last week or this week. Whew. So yeah, we got a uh, um, whole bunch of things going wish on. Wish my pockets here. were that deep. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. Just yeah, below six. Not go that deep. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> Tyler's getting married May second, so his pockets are not. That my pockets deep. are shallow. I can stick the tip yeah. of my pinky in them, and right, uh, right. <laughs> it's I pull out lid. <laughs> it's almost like he's already married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good times. All right, Fred. Well, thank you, cool. buddy. I appreciate your time, you sir. It. All right. You thank you. Hey, all right. Take care. Yep. And Fred. Bye bye. Fred. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you for your service out there, brother. I yes, know. Sir. Uh, uh, you're on state state police. I believe you're retired now. You teach law enforcement. No, no, I'm not. Reti- I got only 12 years on. I got eight to oh, go. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, so keep I miss, on, I miss keep it on, brother. Thing. I thought he. I thought he was done, but uh, that's okay. Hey, man. Yeah, maybe we'll see you out there one way or another heading down the highway. <laughs> Ho- hopefully Buck not Ted. at work, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I don't see you at but, work one day. <laughs> right on. Hey. All right. All right. But yeah, I appreciate that that compliment. It's a uh, it's a tough job. It you know, is, but, man. Um, it sucks. You know. I mean, I mean, it. You you've got your hands full, buddy. We appreciate it. Yep. Uh, you all betcha. The, the first responders, law enforcement, military, everybody. Yes, sir. We do appreciate it. No all problem. Right. I appreciate the compliment. All yep. right, Fred. Thank we'll you, sir. Sounds good. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So, Fred. Uh, he had a lot to he, say. He a, lot a, of good, a lot of good information. I swear to you, that's G-Man's brother. It has to be. If, if he, he said it'll turn on a diamond and give you it, nine cents back. That's a G-Man line. That's I a swear G-Man, to you. That I was is like, a G-Man are you line. sure this isn't G-Man? Yeah, that's... It sounded just like him. But G-Man can never be a, a state trooper. He's no, like mafia. Huh? No, so, he can't. I mean, that's not him. But, I mean, if <laughs> you know, if y'all uh, tune into our live talks or you're on our YouTube channel. You'll or know who G-Man in is. In the off-road, the Fisher's Off-Road family uh, on YouTube or Facebook, you'll see G-Man floating around there. George, uh, he goes on some rides with us. And, and if, you ever, if you ever met him, you're giggling your ass off yeah, right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's G-Man right there. And, and he's actually looking to transition from an ATV to a side. Mm-hmm. So he's listening to a lot of these, um, you know, a lot of people are because they want to get the information that they need to make that educated decision. But I'm going to tell you something. When you look at buying a side by side and you start listening to all the different brands mm-hmm. and what people have to say, it's like what you got to buy one that's best for what you want to do, because they all have downfalls. Yes, they do. I mean, it they do. doesn't matter what make manufacturer model whatever it is you're gonna have it's a give and take you're Mm -hmm. gonna say okay well this is important to me this is not important to me i want something that rides good i want something that has storage no cab heat you know Mm -hmm. you got to go down through the list and see what's good for you and and the thing about fred is you know he got uh the heavy duty tie rods he doesn't have any trees. Yeah. You know, he's he doesn't have anything to worry about. You won't see a tree anywhere yeah. in Glamis or <laughs> any of the dunes that he's riding in. Yeah. So uh, the guys on the East Coast here, they may not set them up that way because they're popping trees. Yeah. You know, so you got to have something to give. So everybody has something different. So you just got to figure out what's best for the way you're going to ride. Yeah. And I think uh, I think we're we're doing this, you know, with these rider reviews, being able to bring that information to people that that really want it and are in the in the market. You know, being able to find out like, oh, okay. This is more of a West Coast unit. This yep. is more of an East Coast unit. Yep. Uh, they use this unit for work and play. You know what I mean? 
Absolutely. So, yeah. So we're going to get on to this next caller here. But in the meantime, if you all are checking us out on YouTube or on our podcast, uh, do us a favor. If you enjoy this content, hit the like button, mm-hmm. hit the subscribe button, uh, the notification bells, whatever you have on uh, podcast or YouTube and uh, follow us. We would uh, greatly appreciate it. Um, we've got a lot of really good feedback on this format and what we're doing. And mm-hmm. we just want to keep it trucking. And uh, we just like to keep this information flowing for you guys. So thanks a lot for tuning in. So if you could hit those, we'd appreciate it and uh we're going to get to the next caller so our next talent our owner is robert jones he is 37 years old 185 pounds 511 from mesa arizona multiple trail systems throughout arizona four peaks bulldog canyon wickensburg or wickenburg i guess uh superstition mountains uh, it'll be one year uh, in April since he bought his 1000R. It has 750 miles on it. This is his first side by side he has ever owned. So it'll be interesting to get his input on this. So, first side by side and, you know, 700 and some miles, he ought to have some information for us, I'd imagine. You know, what's crazy is a, a lot of the people that we're talking to, though, is uh, out west. Out west, I, midwest. I know. It's. I know. Uh, and you know what? Whenever Honda designed this unit, they they designed the R to be more of a, a Midwest out west machine. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah and we cool. found out, you know, some of the other conversations we had that the R does not turn very well, mm-hmm. especially on no, it like Hatfield McCoy hairpin turns. Mm-hmm. So, you know, even though the X doesn't ride as good, handle as good, uh, it's better on the East Coast for tight turns and and woods trails. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's get All Robert right. on the horn let's here. Give Robert a call. Let's talk a little Talon R. Yes, sir. <clears throat> oh yeah we're dialed in now we're good hello this is rob hey, hey robert. robert this is brian and tyler how you doing buddy doing great man how you guys doing we are fantastic we're giving you a call to talk some talent our buddy fantastic i like it yeah yeah sweet uh first of all let me uh just ask you what uh made your decision made your mind up because it's the first side by side you've ever owned why did you uh get the the talent r um i was me and the wife were in the market probably for a good six months um when it looked we looked at can am looked at polaris looked at the wildcat um was kind of stuck. I was really leaning on the Wildcat just because of the suspension that thing had. Mm-hmm. It was really, and it's a stout built machine. There's yeah. all killer killer machines on the market right now. And then I kind of got the word that Honda was coming out with a a, a real sport side by side. Finally, and mm-hmm. it was like, okay, what's this going to be all about? And then they said it was going to have a transmission, and that kind of was the you know that's what's been really wanting to hold me back from kind of getting into the side-by-side thing. I've had off-road trucks, I've had dirt bikes, quads, and the whole belt thing scared me. So yeah. um, once I actually saw the Talon, went and saw it probably a week after they got him into the dealership, I saw it, sat in one, and went, yep, this, this is definitely going to do. And mm-hmm. pretty much, I don't know, maybe Two months later, ended up going down to the dealership and been really happy with my purchase so far. Nice. Good. Do you consider yourself to be an aggressive driver or rider or are you pretty casual? How do, what's your driving style? The majority of the time, I'm a casual to mild aggressive driver. Um, when the wife's riding with me, she definitely likes it when we get going a little bit crazy, but I do have to kind of... Keep it a little bit tame for her, but when I get out with my buddies, if I have somebody riding with me in the passenger seat, I can I can smash on that thing as hard as I want to, and it it definitely has some suspension issues, but I'm I'm getting that stuff worked out here, so mm-hmm. it it definitely had some issues, but I'm like I said, getting that stuff worked out, and it it is a phenomenal machine to go pound on. Well, okay. you were you were talking about uh, having a passenger ride along. What do you what do, what do they think about the passenger comfort inside of the unit? Wife absolutely loves it. She can ride along all day, other than having the occasional pee break. Um, yep. We haven't ever had the day at the end of the day where she's like, "I don't want to go riding in this thing again." <clears throat> um, all my buddies that have been out in it, um, they've had buddies that have had 
utility side by side and gone out with them cruising, you know, 10, 15 miles an hour down some trails. So definitely open their eyes of, holy moly, these things move out in, out in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you put any accessories on yours? I've put quite a bit into it so far. Um, have done a full shock upgrade, um, windshield, radios, tires, <clears throat> rims, bars. Um, just ordered some seats for it, so I'm really looking forward to getting those in. Um, belts were also a number one. That shoulder harness was yeah. a absolute no-no for me. That was before we brought it home from the dealership. We had belts in it immediately. Yep. So, but even that, I mean, it took me a few months to actually get some of those accessories on, and I was I was happy riding around with the thing stock. But now as I'm getting more and more things put on it. Yeah. It just gets better with mm -hmm. Well, you were uh, talking about, you know, one of the main reasons you went with the Talon uh, is because of the non-belt uh, and having the transmission there. Have you yeah. ran into any problems with anything with the Talon so far? Um, not one bit. When I first got the machine, um, it really scared me with how loud the transmission shifted in the gears, how mm -hmm. it, everything felt really, really tight and loud. Um, but after about 150 miles, 200 miles, um, really everything shifts nice and smooth. I can downshift the thing and it almost not have to use brakes going into turn. If you're coming up into a big G out and you're hauling ass way too fast into it, it mm -hmm. it's amazing how much that thing will slow the machine down when you're coming into stuff. Yeah. yeah. What and you, it's as fun as it is to upshift it as well. So what do you think about that? I four wheel drive. So far, I've had no issues with it. Um, I don't do too, too much aggressive crawling stuff myself. Um, I've gotten in some areas where I've been in some kind of steeper, hard pack rock stuff mm -hmm. where it's wet. If I was in my buddy's Jeep or in anything else I've owned before, I probably wouldn't even poke at it. But no issues driving on this thing. It just kind of point and shoot and it wants to go up and over everything. Have you had any issues with it so far? Um, only thing I said, like the suspension for me was not up to par. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll add a, uh, the passenger side, uh, or I'm sorry, the driver's side front, uh, disc right at the axle. I've had a little bit of seepage there at the axle. Other than that, um, I haven't even bothered to bring it in for warranty. One of those, I kind of wipe a little bit of seepage that's there, check my levels and, I'm not losing fluid. Everything seems to be fine. So next time I do take it in the dealership, I do want to have a look at it. But other than that, not a darn problem at all. You know, we've actually, we talked to somebody earlier this uh, afternoon, and uh, they said that the front right yeah. axle uh, had a little bit of seepage out of it too. And Same thing. Same exact thing. They said, you know, just, they just wipe a little bit of it off, and, and it's not enough yep. to cause concern, but it, it, there is a little bit of seepage there. Yeah, I've had, I mean, I've been in buggies where I've had a CV explode and you, you know, when a CV has gone bad and there's grease thrown everywhere yeah, mm -hmm. and it, you can smell burning grease and burning fluid. It, nothing like that. It's, it had that first, you know, 50 to 100 mile new machine, weird burning smell that scared the hell out of me. But that's kind of where everybody's like, no, that's brand new machine smell that's all that is yeah yeah, yeah it's a funky smell that yeah. new that new expensive uh, burn off smell i did not like that one bit yeah yeah when you take them out especially the first especially the people behind you it's mm -hmm. kind of smoking and leaving off a of fume and now you know with so many side by sides burning up it, people that aren't around them a lot are like holy shit my yeah. stuff's burning up <laughs> exactly yeah. that was and that's one of the reasons I kind of stayed away from one of the other brands out there. I know they had a bunch of recall issues with mm -hmm. machines burning down. That's, you don't have yeah, to say any more. <laughs> yep. Say no more. Everybody <laughs> exactly, listening exactly. knows who you're talking about. Um, oh, yeah. Before we – we're actually getting ready to jump into some questions here. Where, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you questions uh, of how to rate things. And I, it's going to be a 1 through 10, 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. Uh, as we okay. know, not all units are a straight 10 down the board, and not all units are a straight 1. So just looking for no, an, not. an honest review. That way we can uh, mm -hmm. find out what areas this can improve upon and uh, what areas it really shined in. Uh, before I ask you that, I wanted to ask you, uh, is there anything that you can think of off the top of your head that uh, if somebody was going out and buying this unit today, 
um, that you could give them advice of something they could do right off of the jump to make the unit better? Right off the jump, no matter what, 100% do harnesses. Um, depending on what your budget is, um, I know a lot of people doing a rim, tire, shock, doing everything off the bat is crazy to try to do. Yeah. Um, upgrading tires alone made a huge difference in the ride. Um, I went with some EFX moto hammers. That's what the Honda Palin racing team is using right now. It tremendously improved the ride. I, I could not say enough about that alone. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the shots go, if you can only swing doing tender springs to start with, that's a great direction ahead to get the machine to ride a lot better. And kind of the slower stuff, that's, that's where the machine wanted to beat you up when I first got it, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the, more you can, the more you can tweak and tune and actually really get some work into the suspension, it, that's when you can make that machine shine. Other than that, out of the box, I mean, I... Point that thing, shoot, go. It's a blast. You yep. don't need to do a lot to them so far. But I, I'm like, each upgrade makes it way better. But yeah, yeah. Out of the box, seat belt 100%, no matter what you do. And then tires, and then kind of start to play around with some springs. Mm -hmm. You want to do some storage space. I mean, you guys know there's yeah, so yeah. much different. Every, everybody <laughs> said as soon as you change the tires, it changes that unit. Every single person that we've talked to said the tires were the biggest yep. difference as soon yep. as they changed them. Yep. Yep. I did rims and tires so I could run almost the same scrub angles and everything. Yeah. Um, went with the one in the front, four three in the back, and it. And the thing it hooks up. I'm I'm really really happy with that. That was my first big purchase, and I'm really really glad that I did that. So. Nice, nice. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this uh, rating system. We're going to kick it off with interior comfort. Uh, you know, dash, the the dash, the speedometer, everything, reading everything, sitting inside of the unit. How comfortable are you, scale 1 to 10? I'm going to put it at an 8. Um, the seat belts are really com comfortable. I know people like to do that gauge relocation deal, but mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see the gauge being unreadable. I don't mind glancing over at it. Mm -hmm. It's... Overall, everything is comfortable inside. I like driving it. It fits me well. Good okay. deal. All right. That's cool. Yeah, that's well, a little, that's... A little, little bit of me bumping the side, but that's kind of where I have to drop it down a little bit for comfort-wise. It just, I need to either put some knee padding in the sides of the machine mm. or try to fix I, the new seats. I think that'll keep my legs a little bit tighter in once we get them in there. But yeah, yeah. overall, I'll give her an eight. Okay. All right. How about uh, reliability? Where would you rate that at? Okay, <laughs> Honda reliability. Yep. I, I, I've I've taken it out. I beat on it. I thought I broke stuff, and I get out and look at it, and there's not a mark on it. And it it's brought me back to the trailer and in the garage, hanging out nice and pretty right now. So. Yeah, okay. I could I could have probably guessed you were going to put it yep. in the tag. That comes with Honda, man. The Honda yeah. name is just means reliability. I think that's what it translates to from yeah. uh, Japanese. Japanese. I yeah. think it, Honda, Honda means reliability. reliability. <laughs> and that that was the problem was when they started floating around with the Honda. That was when they kind of first little dropped that hint about the Kawasaki coming out. Mm -hmm. I was just as excited to hear that. Yep. But I saw that belt drive and now that i've heard all the reviews on it i'm like yeah that belt drive actually sounds like it's pretty damn killer in that machine but yeah. it's not a transmission and it doesn't shift gears yeah <laughs> yep yep now let's talk about maintenance uh ease of maintenance how easy is it to change fluids uh air filters all that good stuff uh one to ten on that um i'd probably have to put that at a seven um air filters are stupid expensive for it mm. um I just changed over and did kind of a pre-filter setup that's on the X, on the X, uh, outside of the vehicle to try mm -hmm. to try to help save that a little bit. If I can get maybe 300 miles out of a filter instead of 150, that would definitely help. Yeah. Um, first first dealer maintenance was a real kick in the pants, mm -hmm. um, but I can do everything else. I I don't trust myself to try to adjust valves and make sure all of that's done correct. Um, but doing the fluids, doing that stuff myself in the garage, not a problem at all. So, yeah, it's a nice, I give it a seven. Good deal. Okay. How about the handling? Where would you rate that and why? Uh, that's the real hard one. Um, 
when we say handling, uh, let me clarify, um, like tracking at high speed, whenever you take corners, do you feel like it's going to put you on your lid? Um, just yeah, to, does, oh, it, does it feel like... Goes, no, I mean, I, handling-wise then, I'd have to give it an eight and a half. Okay. Um, I can, like, out of the box, like I said, it would point and shoot. My wife can get behind the wheel of it, and she's, she's a timid driver, mm-hmm. and even she... She can get a little hot on the pedal and have a little bit of fun with it, and it doesn't scare the shit out of me while I'm riding faster. So, mm-hmm. okay, all right, um, yeah, that's. I'd have to give it an eight and a half on that. So, all okay. right. What about the power? How do you you feel like it could have used more? You think it's the right amount? What do you think about the power? I think the power is right in line where it should be um, for a naturally aspirated. Um, the way that transmission puts the power down and how it it stays in the power the whole time you're driving, especially in sport mode. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know I can, I can wheel a machine. I have no problem getting something sideways, but if, if that thing had a turbo on it out of the box, I think it would almost be a little, almost be on the sketchy side for someone who's a new owner on side yeah. by side. <laughs> oh um, yeah. I, and I, everybody wants to say I can drive a turbo. I can do this. No, that's, that's a lot of machine with it doesn't weigh a lot with a lot of power when you get it down, when you get down to it. Yeah. So um I'd want to put the power for that probably a nine. Um when it comes in the in the thousand naturally aspirated category. Um it that thing boogies. Okay. All right. Well how about uh I'm sure you're gonna have some feedback on this one, but uh the suspension out of the box, uh coming off the floor, how would you rate it and why? Um that is a hard one. Um, it, it out of the box, slow speed. It it doesn't ride the best over some of the chatter. Um, mm-hmm. Once you get in the high speed stuff, those stock, it would want to really. That's when the machine really wants to perform. Um, yeah. That's what that's what Honda built it for. Mm-hmm. But not everybody that is going to have it can be able to go through whoops at 55 miles an hour all day long, hip washes and just haul ass. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's kind of where, that's where it definitely had a drawback or it's fallbacks for me at least. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I'd want to give it a seven just for the fact that you can pound on an high speed stock, but in that slow speed stuff, it definitely, there's room for improvement. Yeah. So definitely. Yeah. But when you really just want to haul ass, that's what that thing it if you take it out of the box, as long as you're not stupid, you're gonna have a really good time with that thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. What do you think about uh turning radius on this unit? It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody <laughs> every <laughs> single person um, yeah. three, four, five it, point turns. Where would you rate the yeah, turning radius at? Some, there, yeah, there's some spots on some trails out here where you definitely it sucks because other machines aren't having to do it. Yep. Um so I mean, turning radius, I sucks, but probably a six. I mean, okay. it. There's a lot of. I know there's some companies trying to work on some crazy hub designs, mm-hmm. and spindles, but I don't want to spend three thousand dollars to make it turn a little tighter. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Until you uh, make it faster with a turbo and turn tighter, you got as much money invested into it as what you paid for it. Which speaking it's of that, exactly it. Which speaking of that, what did you pay for this unit out the door? Um, I ended up doing, it was brand, like, a couple months new. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up getting it out the door for 19 wow. and then I did also do the extended Honda warranty on yep. top of that. Yep. So, yeah, that's a boy. play. That's a boy. Yeah. Yep. How, yeah. How about uh, the line of sight and visibility? Do you find it difficult to uh, see the terrain and when you're going up steep? hills or down or you know looking out the left or the right isn't the machine just uh, all the um, visibility in general i know passenger side front corner any machine you're always going to have an issue with that unless mm-hmm. you have see-through floorboards i mean that it, it, that's the only side of the vehicle that i ever feel that i can't really i don't have a grasp on um i do have a, a full wide angle probably a foot and a half long rear view mirror mm-hmm. um and side mirrors and it I don't have any problems backing up. Um, I'm still feeling like I'm trying to judge the backside of the machine lengthwise. Yeah. Um, but that's just that's just a new machine. I'm still I've only got just a little over 600 miles on it now, so okay. still still trying to feel some of that stuff out. But no, I feel I'd probably put the visibility in eight. Um, 
I can see out the front of the machine fine. I never feel like I'm I never feel like I'm reaching to look over or I'm missing a spot on a trail. Okay. All what right. about uh, cab noise and heat? Uh, you know, hot. Is it uh, noisy? Where would you rate that at and why? Um, I'd have to put that probably an eight and a half to a nine. Um, we don't get much cab heat. We're out in Arizona. And so once it cracks 100 degrees outside, mm. I'm, I'm reluctant to even go out in the side by side as it is. Like it, it's hot. Um, but anytime we're out, I don't feel other than if you're stopped in the, you feel the fan kick on or you can hear the fan kick on, mm-hmm. you'll every once in a while get that little breeze of warm. Um, I can talk to the wife. We, now we have the headset, so that is just still spoiled with those and it's super nice. Oh yeah. Um, but even before that, I would say we could talk to each other without yelling up through 25, 30 miles an hour. Um, Okay. Once we had a half windshield, it made it even better. Okay. Um, there's, as long as you're, if, you know, if you're banging on the gas between stuff, the motor's revving, it's going to be up there. But if you're cruising on a trail, you can talk to your passenger. It's really nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about the uh, fit and finish? What do you think about that, of the overall machine? You know, the doors, the uh, powder coating, welds, does it look clean? I'm going to give it a nine and a half on that. That was one of the big things that sold me on the Talon too. Um, some of the other machines, there's just weird gaps and things don't look mm-hmm. right on machine to machine. And I mean, the doors, the little adjustment knobs in them, I've had to adjust one of the doors. And I mean, my doors don't rattle. I don't hear panels rattling. The paint, I mean, I've, dug it through some really, really old dry hard branches and hasn't scratched the stickers, the paint, um, put some little mud guards on there to kind of help keep mm-hmm. some of the stuff off of there, but, mm-hmm. and kind of widen the front of it a little bit to keep that, keep a little bit of the water off you from inside. But <clears throat> other, the machine looks great. I mean, the front end of it, the back end of it, it everything on to put on there, it fits well. It, you can tell they put some time. It's an expensive Honda machine. You can tell they definitely oh, yeah. put some money in uh, making that thing. Like the way that weird passenger seat tuck in funky pocket that you yep. look and you're like, it's ugly, but if, if it wasn't there, it would look weird. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's just those weird Honda things that the 19 angles they put on the doors on the front fender. It just, it's a cool looking machine and mm-hmm. it, it has good lines on it. It's a, it's a nice looking unit when you're actually, when you're in it, when you feel it, everything fits well. It's it feels like you're in a, a Honda car. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. okay. it's a Honda. It, so everything's really inside. So yeah. so overall, with the scoring system, you gave this an eighty-one point five, which puts it in the B category, which again yeah. is falling right in line with pretty much everything that uh, everybody else is rating the unit. And I mean, the same stuff where you're rating, it's almost identical across the board. It's it's a very consistent unit. Uh, and it seems like yep. it doesn't matter what location you're in in the U.S., yep. uh, first-time driver, or if this is your third or fourth side-by-side, uh, it's falling right in line with everything else. Absolutely. Yep. See, and that's that's what I'm – I was stoked when I heard you guys were doing this for the Talon. I I was fairly new to kind of listen to you guys. I listened to your Polaris. I listened to the KRX reviews and was just like, mm-hmm. this is real sh- – this is actual people that own these things and are not – Nobody's trying to boost or boast other people's stuff or yeah. talk down on other people's stuff. It's it, each unit has good stuff and bad stuff, and mm-hmm. it's, you know, overall, I'm I'm super happy with the machines. Like like I said, there's I've had to put some money into it to make it way better, and mm-hmm. I. I love the thing. I'm so darn happy with it. Well, that's so. that's with every unit. It doesn't matter what unit you get. You yeah. always got to drop an extra at least five or ten grand or yeah. something to to really get yeah, what you want. I made, the mistake of starting to, I made the mistake of starting to add that up the other day and was like, oh, don't do it. Oh, don't do it. Don't yeah. show anybody, Why especially your that? wife. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't show anybody. Don't show the wife. <laughs> Tell her it's like half of what you really spent. Exactly. Yeah. But the best part is, is my wife is 100 percent on board with the thing. That's so awesome. She. Uh, She's got me wrapping it right now in the garage, so I I really can't squawk at her when I nice. <laughs> when we're doing upgrades to yeah. it. Yeah, good. So. good. That's awesome. Well, all right, yeah, Robert. Uh, we're gonna get going here, and uh, we appreciate you calling and you know working this out with us. We you know we we do really want 
honest reviews, and I think that's exactly what you gave us. Uh, we do appreciate your time, buddy. Hey, 100%, dude. Really appreciate you guys. Love listening and watching your show. And, dude, keep this up for the side-by-side game. This is definitely, <laughs> I think, a lot of new buyers, recent, future. This is this is killer for everybody, man. Thank you, guys. All right, Robert. You bet, buddy. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you, my friend. Hey, not a problem. You guys, too. Have a good night. All right, take Bye. care. Bye. All right, there we go. That was Robert Jones. Uh, so I hope you guys, if you know, you've listened to this whole thing up to this point by now, <laughs> and you know where the strengths are. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, the reliability is ten. Reli- it's it's everybody that's, like across we said, the board. That's what that trans Honda translates. Reliability. Reliability. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. And, yes. and you know the R the the turning radius sucks. That is across the board. That is unanimous. It's not like one person said, "Well, it's not that bad." No, it sucks. Yeah, that, it you sucks. know what to expect yeah, when you're bad. getting into it. Uh, There's the tires. The tires right out of the gate. First thing you're going to want to do if you are looking at buying the Honda Talon R, which I'm sure it's the same way with the X, but we'll get yep. it firsthand from them. I don't yep. want to go yep. putting words in anybody's mouth, but the very first thing you're going to want to do is upgrade those tires because they suck. And you know, that's funny because when we did our uh, the intro, uh, when Honda released the Talon, we complained about those tires over and over and over. We Nobody them. wanted to listen to hated us. Hated them. Nobody wanted to listen mm-hmm. to us. None of the other editors wanted to agree with us because no. they're afraid of losing sponsorship yeah. dollars. Me and Dad were the only people out there um, <clears throat> telling the truth, telling them what was <laughs> what was going on, what they what they needed to correct before they released this thing. Yeah. Everybody else was like, "Dude, this is the greatest freaking side by side I've ever been on. It's got so much power. It's this, that, the third. And we're like, "Are you kidding? You, right? You know, you're joking right now." Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the greatest sports side by side ever released. It's it's a good machine. It's a. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of it myself, but there's other guys that are so hardcore on that transmission mm-hmm. that they're willing to sacrifice other things yeah. to have that which and is understandable it, i mean brand loyalty is a thing yeah. and, and reliability it it's there reliability listen man like i said there's probably still a you know a rancher from the the mid 80s yeah. and dude's like yeah man i just piss in a gas tank from Some time to time farmer. and it yep. still runs you know what I just mean? hit a little squirt squirt <laughs> yep. and that thing's like gone yeah so there's you can't question that whenever it comes to honda but yeah. i'll tell you what we can do is what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of these scores come up with a good average across the board we'll come back with our final thoughts and really start to break this unit down from what all of you guys have told us during this podcast well guys that was our last caller we got all of our final scores together we actually had six people scheduled for this but one of them couldn't make the schedule we had something come up at work so we have five total uh people that participated so i think we got a pretty good idea off of these five though we do and if uh for those of you that's watching us on youtube you see that we changed up our outfits here as uh we told you before this takes time this is <laughs> this is something that uh it's a cut usually a couple day event we knocked out all the five phone calls but we ran into overtime and uh had to move on to the next day but uh our overall scores and this is for the talent r guys we are mm-hmm. going to review the x next and uh this is for the talent r overall average uh 1080 miles on these units so they've been out for quite a while uh, average cost that you're going to look at paying nineteen thousand five hundred dollars, and the average age of this unit is like forty four and a half years old. Yep, yep. Now to get in and break down some of the scores: interior comfort ranks seven point six, reliability nine point six, maintenance seven point five, handling seven point nine, power eight point five, suspension six point six, turning radius, which we knew was going to be low, yeah. is uh, six point three, line of sight and visibility is seven point nine. Cab noise and heat is 8, and fit and finish is 9.1, which brings an overall score of 79 for the Honda Talon R. Okay, so that puts it right in, what, the C? What right, is that? yeah, it's like a C+. C+, plus. C, plus C, 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 B. Yeah, somewhere right in there, and I mean, it's... It's nice to see the, you know, like the things that we talked about, the turning radius. Yep. And I'll tell you what scored lower than I thought it would is the suspension. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't think that the suspension on this unit I thought would be a lot better than... Well... The problem with that is that the suspension on the R is better than the X. So it is. the X suspension scores are probably going to be really low. But it depends how they're going to use it and uh, drive it. You know, if you're using it on the East Coast, tight, woodsy stuff, and you're not getting up a lot of speed, the X will be fine because the cornering is going to be better, the turning, mm-hmm. you know. So maybe the suspension won't be as bad. But if you're trying to do the same type of riding 
with the X that you are with the R as far as suspension wise, yeah, yeah, that's going to really bring the score down. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. And by the way, guys, um, I put somebody second to last in this podcast. Uh, that was before we ran into a bit of an issue with that. So yes, we know about it, and yes, we have it fixed a hundred percent this time. Mm-hmm. I cut us out talking about it a little bit, but. I just want to let you all know we are 100% on track with uh, our audio for our podcast. So this is like we're we're right on the money now. Yeah. And we're going to be in the money for the Honda Talon X that we're going to be reviewing coming up this week. Just from this, can you foreshadow anything that's going to be that you can you think would be the same that would fall about the same category? Um well, reliability is always going to come in high on the the Talon. Uh I think the suspension is definitely going to suffer, uh, especially, like I said, if they're trying to get it up to high speeds, uh, you're going to pay the price in the X. It, it it might turn better than you are, so the turning radius probably isn't going to suffer as much. I think the cab heat and noise is still going to be about the same. Um, you know, line of sight, probably about the same. I think a lot of it's going to be the same overall, um, just maybe a couple categories that's going to separate the two of them. So, so overall, you think that it's going to be not on paper, it's not going to be that huge of a difference unless you're getting down to the nitty and gritty of uh, definite opinions about, you know, how I think where it's really going to, you're going to see the difference is the handling. Mm -hmm. I think the suspension definitely and the turning radius. Yeah. I think are going to be the three things that really separate Mm -hmm. the, the R and the X. I mean, suspension as well, but it's, it's the same suspension setup. It's just a different. Yep. set up overall and and that's the thing you look at uh certain side by side utvs whatever on paper uh and it really doesn't look like that big of a difference until you get out there and start driving them and uh seeing what the difference is because you know um who was it had an x and then he now he has an r i forget who that was in the in the the podcast here but uh i mean you go from an X to an R, and the deal was there. He drove his buddy's R's, and it was like, oh, that's it. It's yeah. Over. It's well, he kind of got screwed because he ordered the yeah, R. Yeah, it wasn't in. And then they, he was in, like we talked about yep. with the podcast that we did. You know, whenever your buddies call you and you want to go riding, you're going to go riding. You got a vacation scheduled. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. So, I mean, that might mean buying a unit you don't really want to buy. Yeah. And you're hoping for the best. Yeah. And, I mean, he learned his lesson on that, and he's happy with the R. And that's, I mean, that's really cool. I'm, I, I'll tell you what, it scored higher in the power category than I, I thought it would yeah. honestly from yeah i'm, I'm not a real uh impressed or i'm not a real big fan of the power i think <clears throat> i think overall if you have a straightaway the honda talon does have power it, out it, of the it, hole it, i think it does a good job it but it just it takes a while to get it there i think uh, I, it's not, yeah it's not like uh it's not like whenever you snap that and and, and part of that is because it doesn't have the cvt the, yeah it doesn't it, have the belt yeah, yeah and uh but that's why a lot of people like it. They say it's reliable, so they and don't you, need to worry about it. You definitely can't beat that. And out of all the units that we – and granted, we've only done three rider reviews so mm-hmm. far, but out of all three of those, this is the highest scoring that we've ever had in a reliability category, which oh, is yeah. 9.6. Yeah. And like we said, this entire podcast, you really can't go wrong whenever with reliability whenever you say Honda. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, overall – you know that's what they're buying it for yeah reliability and the fit and finish everybody likes the look of it yeah um couple you know everybody gets upgrades and i think in this podcast we had a lot of good input and hopefully that this podcast has helped you guys out yeah video and and influence your decision on what you're going to get and what to expect whenever you're getting this talent or yeah you got it well you know we've got the x coming up so stay tuned for that that'll be out here shortly we do appreciate y'all tuning in be sure to hit the subscribe the notification whether your podcast youtube wherever you're listening to this at or watching this at we sure do appreciate y'all joining us and uh, we're going to keep these reviews coming because the feedback has been phenomenal so please keep the feedback coming let us know what you think uh tell us because we've given been getting a lot lot of great feedback mm-hmm. saying that people really like it and people that, have people have been asking us to ask a couple different questions like mm-hmm. why did you pick that unit so we added that question to uh the the lineup um so if you've got any questions that you would like to know about a certain machine like why did they do whatever mm-hmm. let us know and we'll add it into the questions that we ask people yeah and then uh you know if there's a unit specifically we go after we go after the unit that you guys want to hear about mm-hmm. and the only way we know that you want to hear about it is if you leave comments and tell us you want to hear a review on this unit or this machine so those are the one that's how we judge what we're going to do next we go by uh viewer demand yep so yep the hottest stuff out there wherever we're getting uh you know a lot of people wanting to hear stuff see stuff you know i'll be honest with you 
uh, I had one person ask me about a CF moto. Yeah. And I probably had 20 or 30 people ask me about like some of the can ams that are out there, whether it's a sport, whether it's an X3. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of people wanting other models, which we're going to get to them and we're going to cover them. Mm-hmm. But there it is. It's the supply uh, of the popularity that we're going to be covering. So the CF moto, not so much. I only had one request to do something. Yeah. And they didn't even know. They didn't care. Yeah. Uh, ATV side by side, nothing specific. So if you have a specific model, that helps us narrow. It down. Yes, it does. But we appreciate you guys tuning in, and uh, we can't wait to get on to the next rider review and spend another 10 or 15 hours down here. <laughs> to it. it takes time, y'all. It takes time. But hey, we appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and listen to all this. So thank you very much, guys. We appreciate you, and we'll see you on the next one. See you.